Alright, welcome back everyone to another episode of Speedruns from the Crypt, your bi-weekly horror hotfix. I'm McDysis, your host for the night, and uh, tonight I'm bringing you a, I guess a, I guess it's a dual-themed uh, show. I wasn't uh, planning on one of the themes, but I was alerted that apparently I matched it and I wasn't intending on it. Uh, first, let me tell you what was intended, which, uh, you know, in honor of uh, the start of Black History Month, I decided it would be a fun idea to look at a bunch of games that feature black protagonists. Uh, we'll be going through each of the games, and it should be pretty fun to take a look at them. Um, but also, I realized that all the games have the number 2 in it, and today's Tuesday. I didn't plan that, and that pun is good, but I can't take credit for it. But it is Tuesday, because it's 2 2 So... Anyway, that is the case, and I hope you're all having a wonderful day today. Anyway, we're going to be going on pretty quick, but we're going to be uh, doing a game of one of my favorite movies of when I was a kid. We're going to be going into Blade 2 by Matt Matt. Take it away. Hello, everyone. I am Matt Matt, and this is Blade 2, um, a game that was released to tie in with the movie, but it's set after the movie, I believe. Um... And I'm joined by Tom Tom Forsyth, if you want to introduce yourself. Hey there, I'm Tom Forsyth. I was uh, one of the graphics guys at Monkey Foot uh, writing this game. Uh, I actually did the Xbox version. We're playing the PS2 version today. Uh, but they're, they're pretty similar. So Yeah, so pretty exciting. So I will give you a countdown to start the time. At the time, we'll start when I skip the first cutscene. Uh, we're doing New Game Plus, so we skip um, the training level because... Why would you do that? Okay. So PM. three, two, one, go. So straight away, I'm just gonna come over to this uh, this box. Yeah. It's a nice box. Don't blink. Gonna, You'll miss it. Just gonna clip through the wall and I'm out of bounds straight away. <laughs> I'm just gonna jump to the end of the level. This game is very uh, broken. Um, yeah, not thanks, broken man. in the sense that like it's broken casually. You, you do need to try to find some. We've been in the game for five seconds. <laughs> we we yeah. spent so long trying to fix these <laughs> outer mat bugs, and Matt and Matt's just found them all again. And we just we thought we'd fix them all, and he's just oh man. <laughs> yeah, that's that level done. We just go straight to the end. Um, <laughs> there you go. And again, um, common theme with this game is I'll be just. Going out of bounds and going straight to the end of the level. Um, this level's the shortest level, so if you blink, you'll miss it. Just gonna go up here. We're meant to destroy like three electric fuse boxes to unlock this elevator. I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna come over to this uh, this pot and side jump into it. Well, I have to actually side jump into it. There we go. And it just clicks me through the wall. And that's into that level. <laughs> <laughs> that's done, man. Uh, this game. So this game was, we had 18 months to do it. We had to, we were given the game and we had to finish the game and ship it in time with the movie. We had to ship the same day as the movie came out. So everything was super time sensitive. We, we had to, you know, something's taken too long, cut it, cut it, cut it. It's, uh, this is the nature of movie tie-in games. It's really brutal as a developer. Eh, it didn't, you know, it didn't turn out too bad. There's always things you want to do. It's a pretty decent game. It's not. Unless you go finding the problems like you do. <laughs> Jeez, man. Yeah. Uh, so actually, as a question really quick, I'm just noticing, um, I guess to Forsyth, really, the game reminds me a lot of The Suffering. I don't have ever uh, seen hmm. that one, but it's like the uh, the horror game on, I think it came out on the same time, PS2. Um, but I guess it's this ty type of like third person um, shooter. Um, you kind of, it just looks similar how it plays, I guess. Yeah, I, I don't remember that being an influence. It just, uh, I guess it just turned out that way. This game is unique. It's. And it's actually, for its time, it's graphically just. For, for 2002, this game looks really good. The one thing I mean, it I'm, does have its issues. The one thing I'm super proud of is what we did graphically. This this pushed the PS2 pretty hard. It pushed the Xbox One pretty hard. Um, we did a lot. We we knew the we didn't have time to polish the gameplay really a lot, 
um, but we knew we could we could get it sort of graphically nice. Look at all that breaking glass and stuff like that. It's really nice. There's some really nice like the vampires dissolving. You know, when you shoot them, they don't just fall down by dead bodies. They sort of dissolve. We got some nice effects. Yeah. Blood splats everywhere. Blood splats stay where they are. They don't just vanish after a while. It, it's pretty good. Um, you know, we we knew we had to make it graphically really pretty, and we did okay. Yeah. But the way you compensated for that was making the AI literally pain dead. Oh, they're really just running in a straight line constantly. Absolutely, absolutely. We wanted it to be fun. We wanted to give you. We wanted. So it was the game designers ripped off Robotron. So Robotron, you use one stick to move and one stick to fire, right? And so we wanted Robotron, but with punching. So you use one stick to punch. So you can literally get like eight guys around you and just punch all of them. Like bam, 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 bam. Like, like Matt's not doing that now, right? Because he's trying to for speed. But, but you can you can have some really cool punch ups in this game, and I, I think eh, you know it's it's pretty fun when you when you get all the punchy stuff. You know, he's he's going for speed, but there's a lot of guys on screen. I'm I'm always really proud of that. It's a good good game design. Yeah, it doesn't like even with like you know 30, 40 enemies crowding around you it doesn't lag yeah that was like it's... day one we said we want a lot of guys on screen and just punching them all because that's blade right he, he faces off against 30 guys and wins and that's that's what we wanted and uh, we succeeded so with yeah we can't skip that level that i just did because um you have to destroy 17 computers for the end of the level trigger the spawn and it's the end level trigger is literally where you would start um so i'm gonna do a little glitch here where you can cancel the uv grenade animation and jump during it and we can use that to clear all the enemies in this room hopefully there we go he's literally like this door won't open till you're finished in here door open it's like it's pretty good how the dialogue lines up. it's amazing how you um, just totally broke in this game i'm in awe dude <laughs> i mean there's probably still things yet to be found we need to find a way to skip city sewers I, oh the sewers i know i refuse I know. to believe there's not a way because basically that level is just a not eight minute escort mission and we can't skip it so as a quick question day, for a maybe. couple of things uh one what is new game plus bypass like does it have like an upgrade system do you get more weapons and what exactly do you get from it uh yeah so basically you get to <laughs> keep casually all the you casually off. skips half the level while he's explaining <laughs> something completely different this guy's good man. he is i like i'm just in awe um so what was I saying? Oh yeah, so yeah, so basically you there's like an unlock system for like weapons. You get each level gives you points, and you can use these points to unlock new weapons. Um, and literally all we use new game plus four is the UV grenades. Um, basically the UV grenade is just a way to wipe out an entire room full of enemies in one attack. And um, like it's not necessary for the speed run, but it does save a lot of time not having to shoot a bunch of people. Um, and then having to conserve ammo. So like right here, there's a bunch of enemies in this room. I'm gonna use one here to kill everyone. You can see the score in the right just like go up every time someone dies and it's just a lot of them. Um, so we need to kill everyone in that room because we're gonna come back that way in a second. Um, but I'm gonna do the hardest skip in the game. Hopefully I can do it fast. Basically we're gonna trick the game into warping us to the other side of a door that's locked. Um, Sadly, we can't go out of bounds to get into that area because the actual out of bounds plane you can stand on is way below um, the area. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump onto this railing. This is the door. And I'm going to punch to get as close to the edge as I possibly can. I'm going to line myself up with a black dot on the wall. And I'm going to side jump, side jump back. Hopefully, if I'm in the right spot, I can go through the door. It's kind of precise. Yeah, so I'm basically, I'm not jumping back fast enough. Um, you're not actually meant to be able to jump twice. There we go. You're not what? meant to be able to jump twice. Um, I know, it's amazing. Yeah, it, right? I don't understand why How did he find that? Does. How did he okay, find that? Okay, that's a good How did you find these? Because, like, how? Um, that was actually, I have to give that credit to the Xbox version. I was messing around on the Xbox version. I've been trying to clip through that door for years and I just happened to mess around on the Xbox version and did that by accident and it took me a good week to 
to figure out how I did it. And this, so this next, yeah, he's got to get this locked. canister back through this door, right? Yeah. So he doesn't, he just puts it down inside the door. And now I'm going to go out of bounds, get back on the other side of the door and pick it up. And that skips the entire level, because basically you have to play through the entire level to um, unlock this area to get the canister. Basically, you have to run through, uh, turn off the power, and then run all the way back. But doing that saves a lot of time. So the, the canister's inside the door, and it turns out we never tested, like, hey, you're trying to pick up a canister. Can you actually get to the canister? Yeah, we forgot to add that check, because why would you do that? So he just picks it up <laughs> through the door. Yeah. And now you got the canister. <laughs> Hooray. Oh, God. This game is so broken. Like, oh, well. I mean, casually, it's not. Well, yeah, because it... I, it took me like a, a, an like an accumulative of, of like five six years to find all the stuff in this game, even close to seven. You know, I I've been running this game for as long as I've been speedrunning, and uh, all the stuff has been found over those years. It's not like I found it like really easily. So what made so. you want to break Blade Two, and what made you want to speedrun Blade Two? Because I feel like this isn't the game that you would normally imagine. Like you you said you're running this as long as you've been speedrunning. It's like oh yeah, let me just run Blade 2 and find ways to warp him through every wall. Uh, this game was one of the games I played a lot when I was a kid. It's just the nostalgia I know that factor. Feeling. Uh, that's pretty much it. That's all I can say. I also love the Blade character in itself, so it was just a shoe in the oh, yeah. to run this. Um, I'm still yet still... to run the first game. I say that. I, I did technically run it. I learned it, I routed it, and I did one attempt, and my game, not my game, the my power went out near the end of the game, and the game is that hard, if you die at all, you have to restart the entire game, so I just never did it again. Um, so yeah, I'm going to line myself up here, to jump inside of this uh, this newspaper stand, and if I back kick twice, I can just get <laughs> through the wall. Oh my God. I'm, I'm annoyed that, well... I say QA didn't find it. I bet QA did find it, and we just went, yeah, that's fine. We're not going to fix it. <laughs> I mean, the, the the guide for all these things, like I've seen a lot of speedruns of a lot of other games where they do this stuff. QA always finds these things. It's just whether you go like, oh, shit, man. I'm not going to spend a whole day fixing that bug. It's too obscure. We got a ship, man. We got, we got higher priority bugs. QA always finds these bugs. I guarantee you. Yeah. There is some stuff that, that works on the PS2 version that doesn't work on the Xbox version. That's why it's faster to do the PS2. So like maybe the Xbox version was more tested. Um, no, man. It's the, it's yeah. the same code. I, I don't know what that difference is. That's a bit weird. I wonder if it's emulator differences or I don't know. Because I, I swear the only thing different about the Xbox code is, is the graphics and that shouldn't change anything. So... Oh, yeah, we've dis we've that discussed that before, and we I don't know yeah. what the difference is. Yeah, the Xbox version does load a lot slower though, and uh, that's probably just due to all the graphical enhancements, like the lighting and yeah, the, the grip and, and the reflections and everything in the Xbox version are not present in this version. Yeah, so it, it, it loads a lot. All the textures are higher res as well. You know, we load a lot more yeah. stuff on, like all the meshes. I I added some some code to. Basically, all the meshes have four times as many triangles. Um, there's some really pretty stuff in the Xbox version um, that I'm really proud of. But uh, but yeah, it's you know it's a lot of data. But the Xbox was a you know, it's just a better machine than the PS2. It's easier to code on as well. It was just me yeah. doing the Xbox version, and there were three people doing the PS2 version. It was a it was a bit of a pain in the ass platform to code for. I tell you. But it's old. Yeah, so this is the escort level I was talking about. Um, yeah. Not really much we can do. We just got to escort Whistler as his places, some explosives for a good, like, eight minutes. So, yeah. There's not really. There is some little bits to explain, but, like, nothing major. Yeah. So, we just got to wait around for him. So, I was talking about the, um, you know, the Robotron thing. And, and like, Mike Disquette, who sort of was one of the original um, designers of this game, he was he was the lead on this game. And, and one of the Mucky Foot directors, he wanted to do Robotron 
that was his like core game design he really liked robotron and he wanted to do robotron but with fists and not shooting and so that's what this design is all about like punching in all eight ways which of course matt's just nuking them all but that's fine <laughs> but but when I'm you play the game properly in. you know you're punching guys in all directions so it's a real you know mob beat em up it's not one on one it's like one on eight and then yeah then he added this bit of ai code where because yeah they're all really dumb right and so he thought well we can make him slightly smarter so what he did was if if you beat up one guy and he was low on health he'd run away and he'd find some of his friends and bring them in to help him right and so the the theory was you'd be beating up a bunch of guys one of them would run off and you'd like say oh i've got to stop him and shoot him in the back of the head or something like that and stop him bringing friends no one ever realized this what actually happened was you'd be beating up like you'd start the level you'd go in the first door you'd beat up four guys one of them would get low on health he'd run off and you wouldn't really know why because there's no health bars right so you wouldn't know why he'd run off and and so you just keep beating up the other guys and then he'd bring back a bunch of guys and so you'd be like oh well oh now i got six guys to beat up and so you'd beat them up a bit and you'd kill some of them and then one of them would run off and he'd come back with some more guys right and you'd be constantly just beating up guys and be beating up guys bam 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 punch 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 you're having fun you know you're beating up guys it's great um but you haven't moved you're still in the first room and after like 20 minutes of just solid just punching people you know punching vampires to death which is like it's fun but you're doing 20 minutes in the same room you haven't moved and then you go oh phew, finally i've run out of guys to punch and then you go to the next and the, the whole level's empty. There's nobody in the level. You've killed everybody in the entire level. Because every time one of them would run off, get his friends, bring him back. Run off, get his friends, bring him back. <laughs> I realized this was this, this, this like clever AI. Terrible idea. You just empty out the level. I mean, it sounds good on paper. It sounds great on paper. And the, and it took us so long to realize what was going on. We thought it was a bug or something. But no, it's doing exactly what it was told to do, which is go get your friends. But, so, so yeah, Disky just ripped... Once we figured out what was going on, Disky just ripped that out and said, yeah, 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 you don't want smart AI. You want fun AI. That's a very different thing. Yeah. Um, so yeah, in, in this level, if we go too far away from Whistler, um, it will spawn enemies on top of him, which is, I, I assume, just to stop you from running away. So we have to stay close enough to him that they don't spawn. Um, because literally this entire level in terms of speed is tied to him. If he gets stuck, shoots at an enemy, gets blocked by an enemy, punches an enemy, if an enemy punches him, you're going to lose time. That's uh, so right, right, I'm going to do a trick. Th this area is meant to spawn some enemies. But if I come over here and stand where they're meant to actually spawn, they never spawn. It just it doesn't save any time. Little little thing. So you can see him over there planting his little bomb and then he's health bar, so just wait. Yeah, we made sure that enemies didn't just suddenly appear in front of you. So if you look yeah. at somewhere, then they won't spawn there. The eight-way combat was actually a problem because we we it's showed an early version fight. of this game to Sony, um, you know, because you have to because it's on the PS2, so it's Sony's thing. And they said, "Oh, you can't do that. That eight-way combat. No, that's we patented that. We we got a patent on that." We're like, what? What do you mean you patented it? Oh yeah, eight-way combat. No, we patented that. You can't do that. I'm like, what are you talking about? We got like three months to ship we're not changing the game design now and they're like no no we got a pattern on that like, well so we didn't steal this idea from you guys obviously because you haven't even shipped that game we stole this idea from robotron so if you want to sue us you better sue robotron so good luck with that because that's a much earlier game so if you want to go to court We'll just cite Robotron and your pattern will be invalidated. You want to do that? Because we can go do that. Because we can't change the game now. 
Anyway, they backed down and said, oh, yeah, no, it's fine, it's different enough. <laughs> it was just so bizarre to be right. threatened on that, like, oh, you can't do that game idea. What, what are you talking about, man? People, people... But yeah, if you think about it, that, that mechanic, that idea is what this game was rated the most for was the 360 combat even though i think it, i think it's pretty good people hated it all the reviews yeah. hated it they wanted i want i want to press a button to punch someone i don't want to waggle a stick to punch someone i, I think uh, i feel like most of those people literally just did this and just spammed it really fast when you're not meant to you're meant to like rhythmically yeah push it they did to, to the punches and, and we got that from urban chaos so urban chaos the game bef that we did before this which by the way Black protagonist didn't get us streaming on here. Oh, well. Anyway, um, <laughs> yeah, Urban Chaos had the same thing, which was, I mean, it was buttons, but yeah, you get the, you got to get the rhythm right to get the combos, which at the time people didn't kind of get. Like now we get it, right? It's a, you know, you'd got to do the right timing and stuff, and you get the good combos, but people just didn't get it. So yeah, we got a lot of nasty reviews saying. It's crap. You just waggle the stick and random things happen. I'm like, what do you mean random? <sighs> anyway. I mean, I know when I played this as a kid, I did exactly that. Yeah, of course but you did. But then do. again, I was a child, so yeah, I know better. That's fine, but like, but you have fun, so that's all right. Yeah, I had a blast with this game. I never actually even finished this game without using cheats until City sewers. Like 2014. Dude, that was the first time I actually beat it without cheating. This game is extremely hard. That last I'll level is brutal. Easy because... That last yeah. level is so brutal. And that was deliberate. With At the time, we didn't want people finishing games, right? Yeah, what are you doing here? Jumping through purple mist. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> God. Um, it's so broken. Yeah, so this game is extremely difficult. Like, it may not look like it, because I'm skipping all the hard stuff. Yeah, if you play it properly, like, it's it's pretty hardcore. Yeah, like doing it like if you ask me to do a glitches run of this, <laughs> no, I'm not doing that. That is horrible. Like the level before the last level, the the last two levels, blood suckers, and the core, are some of the most hardest levels that I've ever played in any game. They are ridiculous. And that the Bloodsucker, for example, is a level where you have to play half of the level to get to an AI companion and then escort this AI companion back through a level which there's so many enemies. It's not even you that's the problem. She can die so easily and then you have to do it all over again and it's just not fun. And then the last level is literally just a holdout section with too many vampires to count and it's so easy to die. So, but thankfully, I have a way around that as well. I love this level because lots of people never realize. So, it's a maze, right? You're trying to escape this. There's this big sort of ro vampire rat after you. Um, oh, yeah, I always, I always like to show it off. Let me turn around. So oh, can you see it? it? Yeah. And, and people, you know, always complain about them because it's a big maze, right? And if you take a wrong turn, it's really hard to. It wrong. Where is he? Yeah, where's he gone? There he is. There he is. Looks like a dinosaur. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's sort of a rat dinosaur. I, I can't remember what it was. It was meant to be scary. Whatever. Also, best skipping the entire game right here. Just walk over to the right of the fire. Yeah, this is. <laughs> How did we let that get past? Honestly. But the trick is that whenever you see rats on the floor, you just follow the rats because they know the way out of the maze. Because they they don't want to be eaten either. It, yeah. it, it when I was a kid, I died on this level a lot because if you don't know where you're going and then that thing comes behind you, you're pretty much just dead. Yeah, that's right. And and we meant to telegraph it a bit easier that like you should follow the rats, but I guess we didn't do it hard enough. Oh well. Yeah, so this level's all just movement. It's actually quite a nice relaxing level to be honest, and it's got some pretty groovy music. Yeah. One, I like the music in this level. One of the problems at the time was like there was this thing like you have to you, it has to be you know 20 30 hours playtime i forget what you know for the game you can't just have like a fun you know 10 hours of fun and that was cool no people wanted 30 hours of playtime and we're like we don't have time to do that so everyone just made their game super hard so that's how you get 30 hours of playtime 
Yeah. It's a bit cheesy, but. I mean, this game is actually quite long, to be fair. It's. A, I mean, I'm skipping all meat. the levels, and it's still like 40 minutes long. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. So, like a glitchless run of this would probably be like a good hour and 40 minutes. Maybe an hour and 30. I love the architecture in this level. All these twisty columns. It's really pretty. I mean, it's grey, but the actual, like, shapes of everything. Oh, and then you skip all that. So we look at black for a while. Dude, I'm trying to explain about the architecture I like, I like and the you're black skipping more. it all. It's more... Soothing? It's more visually appealing to me, so yeah, I yeah. like looking at that. And then there's the stuff that's completely white because you weren't meant to see it. Or is that a different level where there's 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 one level where there's geometry that wasn't in the game and for some reason we left it in the level I forget why oh that was uh, that was um, the Lancy Street subway yeah that's right I, I, you, were, you were talking when, when it came up you, you didn't mention oh sorry no, no. <laughs> but yeah there is stuff you can like see out of bounds that wasn't actually used it has collision but no textures Oh, like um, Whistler's Whistler's place, oh, where yeah, you only see cut in a cutscene, but it's actually right next to you, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and it's cool that you can actually get there and wander around it. It's kind yeah. of neat. So here's one of the new out of bounds. Um, this one doesn't save much time. You wouldn't have seen it yet, but uh, usually in this level we'd go up these stairs and. We jump onto a railing to clip through the floor, but another one of this game, Toxic, found out that you can actually just side jump from these stairs. I never knew that, like, I always tested stairs and it never worked for me, but these stairs just work for some reason. So we can just... Oh, never mind. I... Yep. No. I got stuck. <laughs> That's fine. If you if you jump, like, at a specific spot at the top of the stairs, no, you get stuck. So you need to actually land on the part that will drop you out of bounds and I literally landed like right at the spot that wouldn't do that. So we just line up here and we side jump, hopefully get stuck in the floor and then we can just drop out of the map. It's not working now for some reason. There we go. You see, I don't even really yeah, <laughs> understand that one because like the other ones had you like going behind objects and walls, going into things that were like obvious. That one looked like you just jumped on the top of the stairs. Yeah, I didn't have time to explain this earlier because um, there's, there's a lot course, going on in this course. game that I can't explain everything. But basically what happens is you trick the game into thinking you're going to land at a certain level. Um, for example, you know, one way lower than you. And then you jump backwards, but the game's already determined, okay, you need to land at that level. But since you've then jumped backwards, um, the game puts you at the level where you would have jumped to in the first place that allows us to clip through floors and stuff like that uh, which we use a lot um, but there is a catch you're not actually meant to be able to change direction when you're jumping in. I also didn't get to explain this because that is also a glitch in itself so basically what you do is if you side jump for example left or right and then you hold backwards and jump again in midair you can actually jump back to the left. So you're basically holding backwards and pressing jump, but you're actually jumping left or right, not backwards. It's very weird, but it works, and I ain't complaining because it helps a lot with doing those skips. You can do stuff like that without changing direction when you're jumping. If you, like, jump over a gap to make the game thinking you're going to land in the gap, but you don't. I've done that a couple of times as well. But, yeah, the main tech in this game is just to change direction when jumping. When side jumping specifically, and you can... um then just uh, clip into the floor. Jumping so is... I'm going to do it again in a second. This is the biggest new skip. I'm actually quite disappointed that the old way we do this is gone because basically the old way we did this skip was just jumping through a wall and it had no collision. But this is 20 seconds faster, so I'm going to do the new way. Oh, I haven't seen this. Yeah. Yeah, so we're going to kill these enemies just so they don't bother me. That guy can sometimes hide. He's annoying. And then we're just going to get to the top of these stairs and do the, the same thing again. So, just going to ah, side jump. Ah, gotcha. Go through there. I can actually just watch him up. For some reason, I'm not. Yeah. And then we just kind of turn ourselves to the left a bit and we're just going to jump to the end of the level. 
I don't know how he navigates through these black environments. He just knows where he's I going. I just like, I know this stuff at the back of my hand at this point. I just know where everything is it's out of bounds. It's spooky. Yeah, this level is a massive level, huge. This level glitchless takes about 10 minutes. You have to escort her all the way to the end of the level and then come all the way back to here. It's a really um, cool level when played properly and then he just skips it all. <laughs> I'm glad you can skip it. It's horrible. It's really hard. That's another, that escape is probably the, the third hardest level in the game. Um, but yeah, so now we're on the only boss fight of the game, which is Project Warple. Um, to reveal his health bar, we actually have to destroy these pipes first. You're meant to stab them like from the front, but it plays like this really long animation. But we can actually just hit them from behind, which doesn't put us into that animation. So here he is, Mr. Vorpal. Wait for him to come down, and then we hit him. And then he's going to go back to there to recharge, and we just repeat. So if we stand by this door, this is a huge huge thing for this level i if can't we believe we didn't door, play it find this at the time yeah he will always go here no okay the vampire hit me what is he doing okay this is bad he's gonna okay i dodged for that he, he's meant to go back to the middle but because the vampire stunned me where is he going what is he do okay i don't know what he's doing but i've lost a lot of health already so this is gonna be close if i can make this without dying so, so he should if I don't get hit this time okay now I go back to the door and he will drop straight back down there there he is so he'll go straight back down there and then again we make sure we're by the door and then he'll just drop back down in the same place so we just rinse and repeat that the entire time and these really Hopefully cool I don't die though because my health's not looking good we put in these really cool one-on-one -on -one kills so randomly like that one right randomly when you kill a vampire it'll show a cool <laughs> animation like that and it really annoys matt because it's random yeah. and it wastes time so i'm glad we we planned ahead <laughs> to you know 20 years later annoy matt that's what it was all building to it, it actually it actually mostly annoys me in this level because let's say i'm killing those vampires right there and I get one of those animations right as Vorpal's about to finish his animation, then I'm screwed. I can't, I can't hit him. So I have to try and time it so I stop hitting them when I know he's going to come down soon. But we spent a lot of time putting those one-on-one -on -one cool camera angles. Like, like the camera angle is actually deliberately chosen to look cool. So the artist spent I mean, a lot cool. of time, you know, planning like what angle looks coolest, and yeah, it's it's nice. And on the Xbox, it we had cool. it's like just it's just annoying for a speed. No, seriously, oh. that's your fault, Tom. For <laughs> putting in the one-on-one -on -one kills, but... it is. That's no, and I just walked into the fire. Oh, oh no! Oh. oh man, right. So now we've got to do that level again. It, that was my fault. I, I thought to myself, if I jump over the fire, I'm not going to set on fire, am I? But I, apparently, you do. That's... It just gives us okay. more time to appreciate the one-on-one -on -one kills. See, I, I would have been done with this level, but for some reason, the, I didn't explain this, but um, in this boss fight, he basically has iframes when he comes down. Um, so you have to wait like a second before you hit him. And I, the first attack, then I attacked too soon. That was my fault. But then when I went to hit him again, I got a one-on-one -on -one kill with a vampire, not him. So that was fun. And then I jumped into the fire. Which was also my fault, but it's fine. You there get to experience go. this fantastic boss fight again. Normal service is resumed. Oh, I like the way you stabbed that guy through another vampire. Oh no. It's a shame. This this uh, this level also has on the Xbox. It has the um, the coat. So on the Xbox, we had a bit of CPU time left over. So we put we gave him his cool black coat that sort of trails behind him and does cool things. And it looks. Cool. I don't think the, the coat is in this level on the Xbox. I know it's in. I think it's like you basically from the start of the game, the first three levels you have the coat, and then the next you 
three levels you don't and then the start of the next chapter the first couple of levels you have the coat and then the next ones you don't it's completely random because we we put the we put it in all the levels and then some of the levels we just didn't quite have enough processing time so we had to turn it off so yeah he randomly wears this coat and takes it off even you know even between two levels where it's like wait isn't this the level the continuation of the previous one so where's his coat well because we yeah. we ran out of cpu time but it does look cool when it when it works when it's on so. yeah it's got some nice physics but on yeah. this version it's just not there i remember like you confused me so much when i was a kid because i remember i was like oh and i looked in the manual and i saw that blade had the coat in the first level i'm like What's going on? Yeah, Why do I have right. this? And I was trying to figure out for so long how to unlock it. I, no. I thought you had to like beat the game on like Daywalker difficulty or something, oh, or just no. finish the game and then you could get it on Daywalker difficulty. You really confused me when I was a young nah. child. I was... Xbox only, man. PS2 just wasn't beefy so enough. Annoying. Wasn't beefy. Well, you could have at least changed the the artwork. Oh god, that's a to... lot of work. Not doing that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's 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 mis-selling the game because you're you're advertising the Xbox version on the PS2 yeah, case. It's I not, know. It's not we on. we didn't. I don't think we actually did the manuals. I think the publisher did the manuals, and we got them back, and we're like, oh shit, uh, that's not correct. And oh god, don't say that. So I think we got like a week to change the manual to at least not be blatant lies. But I guess we missed that screenshot. Oh well. Yeah. Well, it just, it, I was really confused when I was younger because I loved the coat idea and it looks so cool on the case. It does, doesn't it? And I remember like looking at like a YouTube video and I was like, wait, this guy's got it. Why can't I get it? I had no idea that it was the Xbox version at the time. No, that was, that was, that the, was the Mark, reason. Mark Rose. He said, I bet we can do the coat. And he went away and he coded it up and it looked so cool. And it, and because we all developed on the PC, right? Because it's just easier to develop on. And it worked fine on there. And then we tried it on the consoles and we are like, oh, shit, no, we don't have anywhere near the, the power required on the PS2. And no! Ooh. Oh, I nearly jumped back in bounds at the wrong spot. Then that would have been... I'm so glad that wall got me stuck. You're listening to me. you got to focus, man. I mean, the run's already bad anyway, because I died on no, well, this really yeah. right as I was about to kill him. That's like three minutes down the drain. But you may have lost time. I'm having a great time watching this. I'm just right now. I think Chad is too. It's a, it's a, this game is a fantastic speed run. I, I it's just a shame no one really runs it. Like, there's only really me, and then uh, someone else called Toxical sometimes does runs, but that's literally it. Like, there's only me and him that, that run it with the glitches. Actually, it's a question. You know, it's a really um, great blend, right? All right? There's some games that have got so many glitches, you can't tell what the hell's going right. on if you if you don't know the what's... And then there's other games where it's just like really tiny little tweaks because they don't have enough bugs in them. This one's got just enough sort of blend of like regular gameplay that you can see what's going on. And then, you know, this sort of rubbish where you... <laughs> just running through black space. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. I didn't actually explain this either, but each area of a level has like a like a level plane that you can um you know stand on. And that plane is extends out of bounds too. So basically if you jump um from an area that's really low at the like really low down and you jump up into an area that's meant to be really high up in the air. As long as the level plane is is there at that point, you will get warped up to it. So that if that wasn't there, a lot of this stuff wouldn't be very useful because I'm jumping out of bounds and it looks like I'm jumping out of bounds, but you probably don't even notice that I'm warping up and down and around the level. Like you can tell when I'm warping down because you see me jump and fall, but when I'm warping up, you do, you probably couldn't even tell that it's happening. Right. And yeah, so I just went out of bounds to get to this switch to turn off the power. Electricity um, and, and for a long time, we didn't have that ground plane. So if you fell out of bounds, like you just fell forever, and that was game over. And like really? uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. For a lot of the development time. But we just had so many out of level bugs. I mean, for six months, we were just fixing these stupid out of level bugs. Like, you think it's buggy and holy now? Oh my god, you could just trivially just jump out of bounds, no problem. I would love to know what happens if you just fall infinitely out infinitely out the map, because you can't do that. Oh, uh, 
Nothing happens. Did you just die? You just, no, you just fall infinitely. Forever. No, nothing happens. Well, you just least, keep falling. At so, least when you so put we, that into place... It was like a way for like if people casually fell out of the map, then they could just walk back in. Exactly. So so that was added to at least go like, okay, well, you know, we screwed up, we 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 forgot something, but at least they can walk back into the level and hopefully continue their game. But yeah, before we had yeah. that ground plane, you you just fell forever. Bye bye. <laughs> also, we have another canister, so you can probably tell what's going to happen. Yeah. I'm just gonna. Yeah place it in this inside this electric fence and I'm going to grab it from the other side. So in this level you meant to use two of these canisters to blow up two things which are called like dark energy storage chambers um, but we can skip doing one of them because thankfully the end level trigger is only tied to the second one so we can just skip the first one and it saves about 40 seconds I believe so but we need to get out of bounds and the easiest way to get out of bounds is to do what we call a uh, like a, a float where I'm going to trick the game into thinking I'm going to land on this floor below me, but instead I'm going to land past this rail and float in the air. And that allows me to jump through this wall, which doesn't have blue room. And now we're out of bounds. Boink. There we go. And then we've got to jump back in bounds behind this electric fence, which is actually quite finicky. That should be the perfect lineup. So you can see there it. There we go. There's the fence. There he is. And then you pick the canister up. Yeah, a lot of this stuff has been like years of work. I've tried to find that skip in this level for so long, but I just could not find a way out of bounds. It's just trial and effort. Like, you just got to try stuff. You know, if the, I will say this. If there's ever a glitch in a game that you think is, like, not possible, you just got to keep trying. I've There's been tons of games that I've found a skipping or a glitch that I never thought I would find, but took me a long time to... Seriously, I'm going to get stunlocked. Please stop, please stop, please stop, please stop punching me. You cannot put the canister down on the floor, on the stairs. It's so so you have bad. to literally go down the stairs. So I'm going to play this safe. I'm going to come up here and kill this guy. Can you die? Oh, there we go. You were so God, unlucky with that. Yep. Oh, look at their health. There you go. Yeah, so this level, basically these two guys with the guns, you have to hope they take cover. That's like the best RNG. But the first one just shot me straight away. And then as I tried to go back down to drop the canister to shoot him, that, that other vampire was having none of it and just started to punch me in the head a bunch of times. Uh, it was only 20 seconds. But yeah, it's really frustrating, the, those stun locks. Yeah. Mountain base, three, four, yeah, so the, there's a lot of skips in this game that I've found just for trying hours and hours, days and days, years and years, just to try and find something. Um, which basically just brings me to my point that you should never give up trying to find a skip in Isn't the game. Isn't a lovely you one? You know it's possible. Backwards yeah, through the wall. There you go. Easy. Um, uh, so yeah, you should always just persevere. Is what I would what I'd say. And the exciting background because everything's on fire. <laughs> so next up is the last two levels, which are me technically meant to be the hardest. Like I said, bloodsuckers and um, the core. Now, bloodsuckers is the longest level in the game. 100%. But we're going to skip it all as usual. But we're going to skip it in a way that you wouldn't expect. And I kind of want to try and tell the story of how I found it. Because it is it is great. Yeah, it's so this, this level here was put me off actually running this game back in the day. Doing like full real time runs. Because it's just so difficult. It's like this um, bridge you have to rotate. or I, I forget the details. It's a long map. Yeah, you have to basically go and find Dr. Grant. Uh, lower this bridge and then escort her to this big massive like energy receiver for her to turn it off uh, excuse me sir and then when you turn it off it unlocks this gate which allows you to get to the end of the level now here's the kicker this end level trigger is behind this gate the floor plane for this area is below that it's basically where the lava would start and you can't get up to the end level trigger. It's just not possible. Um, and you're thinking, well, okay, so there's a gate there. Like, what do you do? Like, how do you get past the gate to get to the end level trigger? It, it's ridiculous how easy it is. And it took me so long to find it. And I remember one day, I just, I was like, I'm going to mess around again. I'm just going to try and, like, mess with the gate. Just because I was bored and I needed something to do. Also, yeah, I, what, I skip, what I skipped there was turning the... the uh, bridge. Yeah, this is the gate. 
and the floor plan is where that lava is so you wouldn't be able to jump up here but if you literally just come to the door backwards jump you just get through it that's you disgusting. can just clip through it just by jumping backwards. Like there's, and I remember finding that, and I was like, "What?" Man, like there's that some works. there's I, some bugs where I'm like, "Okay, I get it." There's no way we would have found that bug. Matt's just spent way too long punning punching at this game, because we would never have found that that bug right there that he just backward jumped through the final gate. I can't believe we missed that. I can't believe we missed that. It's so simple. What the hell? Anyway, <laughs> that's game dev. <laughs> yeah. So this level is basically, we need to um, turn, not turn, we need to destroy these three like pipes. Um, Plunge your blade into the This is kind of like the final the boss, orifice. but it's not really a boss because you don't fight it yourself. The now Whistler's going to come through this wall, and we have to basically we're meant to cover him while he plants explosives again. But in this room with all these enemies trying to kill you, they're infinitely spawned. By the way, but I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to come over here and drop on this ledge. I'm just going to hopefully not get clipped out of bounds. Thank you. They can fall on your head and pop you through the floor. That's not good. Excuse me. Who just punt? Cheeky, Did he really just punch cheeky me from bastard. Look at him. Oh no, he's missing <laughs> you. So the weird thing he's about chin. this is I think we actually found this bug. So so we did a version of the game and we shipped it off to the publisher and they gave it to like Microsoft and Sony who test your game for like two weeks to make sure it doesn't it complies with the, the, the TRCs, it's the shipping guidelines. And you sit in the office for two weeks doing nothing, just waiting for the phone call. Because this is a phone call, right? You know, we've act when we say we've given them a disc, we've literally burned a disc and sent a courier off, you know, t to give it physically to them. Because there's no, you know, the internet's shit and you can't. So we've literally burned a disc and given it to Microsoft and Sony. And we're just in the office waiting for them to phone us and say, hey, there's a bug, you have to fix this. So while we're there, you know, doing nothing really, just waiting, someone finds this and we're like, oh shit, oh god. I mean, it's not a game killer, but yeah, if you get on this ledge, then the final thing's a bit easy. And so yeah, we're- they just, they, 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 they target you, but they can't get to you. Yeah, so, so they're, they just, so they're, they're all just like around. under his feet trying to hit him, but they can't reach him. So, so Whistler's just wandering around blowing shit up and they're not bothering him. <laughs> they're all right below hit, below Blade trying to hit him, but they can't. So we found this bug and we're like, oh shit, we should fix that. But meanwhile, of course, Sony and Microsoft are testing their versions. And so we find this bug and we find a few other minor bugs. And then we get the call that like Sony Europe or something found a bug. And so we have to fix that. So we, we actually resubmitted that. So we're like, oh yeah, yeah, that's a good point. So we resubmitted that to Sony. But in the meantime, our publisher said, oh yeah, but that was only a European version bug. Um, so we went ahead and pressed the, the American version. So I think this is the NTSC American version only is this bug. I think the no, but it works on PAL. As well. Oh, does it work on PAL? Okay, so I've got that, or maybe only Microsoft found it or something. But I remember we it just work differently on PAL. On PAL, the enemies kind of just stand there, completely motionless everywhere around the map. But on NTSC, they're always trying to get you, still regardless right. whether you're on the ledge or not. So, so it's so, a... but yeah. Anyway, get ready on time. I completely forgot. Oh yeah, oh yeah, <laughs> timing. Because that's the end of the level. And time. There we go. There we go. But yeah. So, so busy carrying away, listening to your story, got carried away. Oh no, that was it. It's just like the different versions do different things. Because yeah, we literally fixed a bug in one version and not in the others. Because the publisher went, oh yeah, yeah, no, we sent that off to the presses anyway, so it's done. And we're like, well, there's loads of bugs in it. And they were like, yeah. yeah, we don't care. Um. Also, there is another difference. Hang on. That's My name. Yeah. That did the clip Thank you. Through that and all, door. The, all these other cool people. That skip to click through that door in Acid Rain. Um, 
only works on NTSC, doesn't work on PAL. I'm assuming it's the extra 5 FPS boost from, from PAL to NTSC that causes it. I don't know, but yeah, it, it only be. works on NTSC, could so be. that's the reason we play NTSC. Isn't that weird? Yeah. Yeah, that was that was Blade 2. Absolutely fantastic speedrun. Um, I, I always want to get more people to run this game, but like, it's not hard. Like, like, like it might look hard what I'm doing. It's not... The only thing that's really difficult is navigating out of bounds. But once you get used to that, it's pretty easy. Like, but it's not difficult to do. Um, but yeah, so that was Blade 2. Thanks, Tom, for, for commentating with me. Pleasure as always. Um, and yeah, um, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the run. And uh, I hope you enjoy a Left 4 Dead 2, which is coming up next. And yeah, thanks. Hey, before we do go, I want to ask, uh, want to ask you, Matt. Matt, anyone did want to uh, watch more Blade Two or wanted to watch you in general? Where can they find you? Uh, well, you can find me on Twitch, Matt Matt, just Matt Matt. Um, I also upload videos to YouTube, which is just Matt Matt Two. Uh, and yeah, also someone asked, my PB is forty-one seventeen, so that one wasn't great, but I did die on the Vorpal, which loses a lot of time, especially near the end. So. And but yeah, that, that's and it. And then as well, the other one of you, uh, if you have any shout outs you'd like to give, um, anything else? Uh, just shout outs to the devs for making this game. If it wasn't for that, I wouldn't be able to run this fantastic, fantastic masterpiece. All right. Well, I just want to say thank you to both for being here. It was actually a really, uh, what, there's a word for it. It was really, I was really invested in a lot of the stories and the back and forth between you two. It's fun to listen to the, what, the dev and speedrunner kind of going head to head in a way. So. I've known Tom for, uh, for about, it's nearly a year now. Hey. Yeah. Since we did, I'm, we did that, uh. I'm so happy someone has got some fun from this game this is this is one of the worst games i've ever shipped i, I <laughs> kind of only half enjoyed my time devving it so i'm glad someone's getting some fun from it oh well, hey your back and forth between yeah. you two is very good you have great chemistry together thank you all right well that being said we're going to go over to a quick wellness break this is the time to stand up touch your toes stretch your legs do what you need to do we're going to be right, back, be right back very quick with Left 4 Dead 2. However, before we go, I just want to let you know that Unapologetically Black and Fast is coming up in the new recurring Hotfix Marathon, Black Runners are front and center in a celebration of Black Joy. The first iteration is running from February 12th and the 13th for 12 hours a day. Uh, schedule is currently out. You can find it at gamesdonequick.com slash hotfix. We'll be right back. Welcome back, everyone, from the break. Hopefully, you are all doing good. You got a nice snack, touch your toes, stood up, stretch your legs, all that jazz. Welcome back. We are continuing the list of games that we have, and not only do we have our list of twos, we're on the second of the games. I feel like, really, the theme of today is two. I think the theme of last time was also two, but it's kind of an overarching theme to the... It's a... What's the word? Uh, supplementary theme. Anyway, we're going to be going further on to the night. We have two more games for you, and our next game is going to be Left 4 Dead 2 featuring Waifu. Take it away. What is up, gamers? I'm Waifu, and today we're going to be running Left 4 Dead 2, main campaigns solo, playing as Rochelle. Um, run's about to start. I'll count down when I gain control. Uh, basically, long and short of it, is um left for dead 2 but you don't have any friends and you don't know how to use console commands so you can't kick the bots um everyone's gonna start in three two one go so there's a lot to explain in this run it's really dense but it's also super super fun really fast paced basically the objective is we gotta start our mission and get to the end of the mission as fast as possible that's what speedrunning is welcome to twitch Anyways, um, in order to do that, we got to get to the safe room, which is the room that is safe at the end of each level. And when we do that, uh, we got to make sure that our whole party is with us. And if the whole party isn't there, then you can't move on. No man left behind unless you shoot them to death in the spawn. So your AI companions, um, they're not going to let you leave them behind. And if you just try to speed run with them alive, then they're gonna take 12 years to get to the safe room. So what we do, give them the blicky, put them down like old Yeller, 
you know, and then we don't have to worry about them taking forever to get to the safe room because they're never going to get there. Um, and that's important because we move a lot faster. Fence hop? Oh, Pog. We're gaming. Um, we move a lot faster than the AI because we can do something called bunny hopping, which is what I've been doing where I'm jumping around like a rabbit here. Um, bunny hopping is really cool. As you can see, gaming is occurring. Um, basically, the way it works is uh, you gain momentum in the air by strafing left to right and not holding the W key. And when you're about to hit the ground, you press the jump button, the very same tick or the smallest possible amount of time that the game reads inputs that you hit the ground. So if you jump the very same tick you hit the ground, then you maintain your momentum and you can increase your momentum by strafing through the air. So normally in source games, you would map the scroll wheel to jump to make it easier to maintain your momentum. But in Left 4 Dead 2, is if you don't jump at exactly the right time, you lose all your speed. So you have to manually do the jump input at the exact right time every time by yourself. So I actually have jump bound to space bar, and that's why you hear the big loud clacking sound every time I jump, because that's me smacking down the space bar at a very precise interval. Um, and so this game runs at 30 ticks a second, which means 1 30th of a second is the smallest amount of time that the game can check for inputs. And so that means that every single jump is basically a frame perfect trick if the game was playing at 30 FPS. The game is not playing at 30 FPS, thank God. It's playing at like 300, but the timing is still the same as if it were 30 FPS. Um, so that makes bunny hopping really, really difficult, but also super, super satisfying to both watch and do, especially since this game is very, very random. Um, it's known for having this super cool director AI that uh, dynamically changes the way that the game spawns enemies and blah, 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 blah. That's, it's all fooey. It's not real. The game's literally just random. There is no director. It's just a bunch of variables that have random things happen. So common infected spawns are random. The regular zombies. Special infected spawns are random. Tank and witch spawns are random. Uh, sometimes the pathway that you can go spawns randomly in different orientations. And uh, yeah, like everything is random, which means that every single run is going to be completely different which makes this run really fun to watch and it's really fun to do no resets of because you have no idea what's going to happen and you just got to adapt, overcome, like I'm trying to right now, but it's very hard sometimes. <laughs> um, and since we are solo, if we do get grabbed by a special infected, we're done though. We got, we got no do-overs. That means that we just got to start the whole level again. And that's really slow. So we don't want to die because dying is bad yeah hope you're keeping up here <laughs> dying is bad unless you're a bot and then you need to die as fast as possible um they will bleed out over time which so like in this mission i only shot them once because the mission's really long and i'm not reasonably going to be able to get to the safe room before they bleed out uh, they have to be completely dead for the safe room to progress to the next area. So if they are still bleeding out by the time you get there, you just got to wait for them to bleed out. And that's slow. So sometimes I'll shoot them extra, depending on how long the level is. Um, but like I said, this one's pretty long, so I don't really have to worry about it. So uh, I guess this is a question to uh, possibly help clarify for uh, Twitch chat. Uh, is there a reason why the first level that you picked is Dark Carnival? Uh, because it's faster. <laughs> it's just, sometimes you die, especially in solo. But yeah, it's because it's faster. Uh, you can do... This is main campaigns. So we're doing the five main campaigns that the game ship with. Uh, Dark Carnival, um, Swamp Fever, Hard Rain, The Parish, and... I think that's all. Dead Center? Uh, and Dead Center. Yeah, that's the one. Um, and you can do them in any order that you want, but there is a specific reason that... Dark Carnival is fastest to do first um, that you'll see at the end of the next map. Um, but other than that, it's entirely personal preference. You obviously want to put the hardest levels first 
Um, unless you're me, because you're insane, I guess. Because um, you want to get the hard stuff out of the way. You know, not resetting too much. Dark Carnival is definitely the hardest on top of just being faster to be first because it has the most random elements. Uh, there's really, really punishing tank and special infected spawns that can happen on this map. And uh, if you're going for a really good time, there's a lot of things that, have, that are random that can affect what kind of time you're gonna get. Uh, thankfully for a no reset run, doesn't really matter that much. Just don't die, you know? I already kind of broke that rule, but I'll try my best to not die for the rest of the run. <laughs> So here we're going to do coaster skip, it's iconic Left 4 Dead speedrun trick. Um, it's a big roller coaster, it's one of the game's boss champ. Okay, I got him. Alright, that was scary. One of the game's shit. okay, hi. Uh, one of the game's crescendo events, dude, it literally fell out of the sky. One of the game's crescendo events where you have to activate a timer and then Endless hordes of zombies come at you until the timer's up and then you can progress but you can actually just parkour up the side of the coaster and just go right to the end unless a jockey rides you off of the roller coaster and you die but you know game's random folks I yeah was just kind of praying that he wasn't gonna do that I guess this adds to another question. Um, also, by the way, for any of you questions that I ask, feel free just to take your time on answering whenever's good. Um, what would you say is the worst special infected to deal with? Oh, it's the jockey, for sure. This is I can see why. Commonly nicknamed the jockey. <laughs> and uh, he's just awful. Just the worst. His hitbox is super disjointed. So it's actually like way above where the model is. And you have to melee super early. As well as like because of that, and oh my god, where's the hunter? He's on top of me. Now he's dead. Um, because of that, if he's above you in elevation, it's basically impossible to melee him. He's just gonna grab you and you're just, you're just gonna die. Um, but yeah, definitely I would say it is the jockey. And then following the jockey would be the charger because the charger is the only one that you can't dead stop. You can't like melee him to stop him from killing you. So if you're like in a narrow hallway, then you are just kind of screwed if you get a charger. That's why uh, the most important skill in Left 4 Dead is adaptation and also luck. Those two things are, go pretty hand in hand, to be honest. Where? Is the smoker? No way, dude. That is unfortunate. That was the luckiest right. smoke so I've ever deal. seen. I know, that was sick. MLG versus player right there. I was unluckiest at that point for you, but... Yeah, true. So, like, here's the deal. I'm getting all the bad RNG out of the way, right? Right. So that it goes well later on. Exactly. I guess this also goes to show, realistically, that this game is hard. It's actually one of the reasons why I never <laughs> wanted to learn this game, because I'm fully it's aware and how punishing it can be. Yeah, very, very punishing for sure. But that's kind of what makes it fun, is like, it's this insurmountable challenge, right? It's, it's super random. It's like, can you, you know, overcome it? The answer apparently is no. You're going to make a fool of yourself. But, you know, sometimes you do, and that's Pog. Hey. You know, the, the near the near misses are Pog. Like, that hunter I killed, that was kind of Pog. But, you know, sometimes you die. Well, actually, I guess, okay. um, following up to that with the learning of the game, uh, if anyone did want to learn this game, like, how how low is the floor? How, like, how hard is it really to learn the game? Like, if someone wanted to crank out a run, could they do it at, like, throwing enough attempts at the wall? Or is it something you have to practice, like, every level consistently? Uh, honestly, it's just like just straight attempts because the actual execution of the strategies and stuff is not hard Like none of the skips are really hard. They're all pretty free. You know, like the routing is is really simple You know, you're not gonna mess up the route so you can't finish the run or something because the game is very segmented um, The thing that makes it hard is just not dying like you just gotta be able to adapt to a bunch of different situations and the only way to learn how to adapt to those situations is by getting into them, right? So you just kind of have to throw a bunch of attempts at the wall. But 
The nice thing is, as long as you approach it with the right mindset. Yeah, like, look at this. I literally got no specials. Like, I'm already at the safe room. Yeah. RNG. But yeah, like, uh, once, if you just have the ego death and you're like, you know what? This game's hard and I'm going to die and that's fine. Then like trying to live is like way more fun. You know, if you just like, I'm just going to try to live. I don't even care if I go fast. Like for the longest time, my goal was just a deathless run. Just like, I'll try the speed strats, obviously, but like, can I beat the game without dying? And uh, it took me quite a while, but like, you know, learning to adapt and stuff is what is the bread and butter of this game, in my opinion, honestly. And if you're at all interested in learning how to speedrun this game, the community is really awesome. Lots of people. If you go to uh, speedrun.com slash L4D2, there's the Discord link there. And it's a really, really awesome community. Lots of helpful people. Definitely not for the faint of heart. Super difficult speedrun, but, um, you know, it's doable. It's just hard but it's very rewarding. You know? the, hard, the hardest things in life are the ones that are the most rewarding. Speaking of hard, uh, this is arguably the hardest map in the game. It's called Barnes, because um, there's Barnes here. And there's a crescendo event that almost always has a tank. And the tank can be very scary. We're gonna try to get into what's called a god spot. Hopefully, before the tank gets over here. I'm gonna cry. Ah! Okay, this is gonna be interesting. Objective, survive. out of here tank this is my video game leave my video game alone yeah so this is barnes and obviously it's very difficult <laughs> there's like almost always a tank here and then once this gate opens it's endless hordes and i had to throw my throwable to survive the tank so normally you'd use it here but i don't have one because yeah and then of course there's a witch here my Goodbye. god it's okay i'm a gamer we're fine I lived. <laughs> I want to note that uh, this one that threw literally ever to a tank, witch, two Volotovs, first try. The other one, Surprise. last second jockey, one jockey, last second smoker. Yeah, that was fun. Okay, so this is the reason why we do this level first, is right here. Um, right at the finale, there is a glitch where if there are players in that section of the safe room and you start the finale, it actually kicks them from the server. Uh, Left 4 Dead 2 is a game that you can play single player, but even when you are playing single player, uh, the game launches a server that's hosted on your PC. And that server is used when you're playing like on the specific launch that you're doing. So as long as I vote to switch maps instead of going to the main menu, I'll stay on the same server. And what I can do is, by starting this horde, is I can actually kick the bots from the server. So they're actually no longer a part of the server, and if I vote to switch maps, they'll maintain calm. So if you see at the bottom left, um, there are no more bots, it's just Ellis. He's all by himself. Kinda lonely. Um, that's because we don't want to kick all the bots, we just want to kick all but one. Because killing bots is slow, um, especially on dead center. And we do need at least one bot to do a couple of tricks later on. Um, so now we're standing in what I was trying to get in earlier, which is a god spot. Uh, basically, it's a part of the map where the nav meshing, or what tells the enemy AI how to get to us, is broken. So the enemies won't know how to reach us, and so they'll just stand still and do a little rave dance until they despawn. Um, the way that finales like this work is when you kill enough enemies, then a tank spawns, then you kill enough enemies, then another tank spawns, and then the helicopter picks you up. Um, but what you can do is if you get into a god spot, uh, the enemies will just die, like right after they spawn, and that's a lot faster than killing them yourself, especially when you're solo. Uh, when you're in co-op with like a four-man group, it is actually faster to kill them manually, but for solo, way safer, and 
uh, faster to do it with a god spot. So I'm going to go for something a little crazy here, because why not at this point? Um, I'm going into a different god spot that's closer to a setup for a trick that I'm going to be trying called Coin Toss. Um, so the rescue for this level is a helicopter that either lands where I'm aiming right now or over there. And it's a 50-50 chance to land on either side. It's totally random. Um, if it lands on the side that I'm on right now, the hitbox that takes you to the second level is actually active as soon as the helicopter spawns. So if you stand right there and wait till it's about to spawn, and then you vote to change maps and it spawns on the right side, then you'll actually vote to change maps while you're still able to before the level ends and uh, you'll get transitioned into the next level early. Saves like 15 seconds, but you got to get good RNG. And if it's on the wrong side and you vote, then you're going to vote, but you didn't actually beat the level. So that makes the run invalid, but I'm going to vote either way. So like if I don't get it, then we can all just pretend that the run's still valid. Um, so we got to wait for the other tank to die. And then we'll be able to go for it. Thanks, Dead. This jockey scares me. I have no idea where he is, but I hear him. I got it. Fog. And that's coin toss. Very nice. I'm glad I got that. It's rare that you get to show that off in a marathon because it is literally just random. But yeah, that's what the coin toss looks like. Um, spawns in immediately. Now the important thing is you have to get that fade out for the run to count because otherwise you didn't beat the, fan the campaign. Um, so if you vote too late, then you can't vote because the fade out's already happening. And then you have to go to the main menu and you'll have to get the bots back. Um, and if you vote too early and you get the wrong side, then you just leave the campaign without actually beating it. Now we're on the second campaign. This is Swamp Fever. Everyone's favorite campaign that no one ever plays. Um, and we're going to be doing a trick that is exclusive to the earliest patch of the game uh, called Infinite Stumble here. Basically, the way it works is if you ex uh, get stumbled by like a charger or a boomer or an explosion of some sort, then you will continue to stumble backwards infinitely if you keep switching your weapons. Um, so we need some sort of explosive, like a propane tank, nice. Um, and we'll set it up to stumble infinitely across this gap over here, um, which will skip this crescendo event. That's really important because this crescendo event's really slow. It takes like two minutes. So this skip actually saves like two minutes. Nice, I got it. This is kind of scary because um, there is a bug that happens where if you have completed a campaign, like I already beat Dark Carnival, right? On the same server that I'm playing on right now. If you completed a campaign on the same server that you're playing on and then you start that uh, crescendo event, you actually get a glitch that makes you invincible. Uh, it's called God Mode Glitch. You can't take damage, you can't stumble, um, you can't die, you can't vote can't do like anything but you can't you, know, you can't die which is cool you think that's useful but you need to be able to stumble so that you can go across the gap and so if you're too slow after activating that then you will actually just be stuck and have to wait for two minutes so it's, it's a huge time loss actually you either have to do the whole level again or you have to uh you have to just wait it out and to get it to go away you have to restart your game <laughs> so it's it's not ideal Thankfully, I practiced that a lot today, and uh, it went well. Didn't didn't get memed by the uh, Godmo glitch. Hello? Now that we're in uh, mid game, it's just me and Ellis, two buddies, and uh, we're just gonna be going to the end of the levels. And Swamp Fever is like pretty straightforward, honestly. You just want adrenaline because it negates the movement speed slow down from the water. And uh, there's a lot of it, hopefully, if you get good RNG. Also looking for a boomer bile and a shotgun upgrade. 
But adrenaline's always good too. So for shotgun, is that more of a matter of preference or shotgun like just the best gun in the game? Yeah, the auto shotgun is just objectively the best gun in the game. It the only thing you're really gonna be killing is common infected that are running at you like close and special infected. And the special infected are probably gonna be pretty close too, so you can just you know, delete them with the shotgun. And the shotgun has some pretty good range, so it, it's just by far like the gun that you want. If you can have an auto shotgun, that is the gun you're going to be having. Except for like very niche circumstances. Like in Dark Carnival, I grabbed the assault rifle because I wanted to kill the common infected while I was in the god spot. And that is better because you're going to be stagnant, not going towards them or anything, right? What the hell just happened? <laughs> I was like stuck. That was so weird. Hmm. Adrenaline and the bile. That for next map. So interesting thing to note about the common infected is that you can only have 30 of them on the map. Only 30 common infected can exist at one time. It doesn't feel like it because they respawn like instantly, but you actually don't want to kill commons unless you feel like they're going to like chase you. So like if you see commons like standing around and stuff, it doesn't, it's not actually productive to shoot them because they're just gonna respawn in front of you in places that um, are likely to screw you over. It's, it's part of the reason why you like almost never ever want to use a pipe bomb as well, because it does the same effect. Like it kills all the enemies, but then they just end up respawning in front of you anyways. So it doesn't really help. Um, as well as it's important to note that special infected sp start spawning 35 seconds after you leave the safe room. So that's why you don't really see specials like right at the start of the level, like chasing you out the safe room door or anything like that. And for some levels, wow, these hops are really, holy, sh okay. For some levels, Ooh. you <laughs> go so fast that you don't even see them at all because you get to the end of the level by like the time that their timer's up basically. Wow, that those hops were actually insane. That, that was pretty That's sick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is this. If my splits were running, this would definitely be a gold split. Like this is really really good. Um, actually, I guess a question. Uh, I guess in terms of the bunny hopping tech, because I know you do a lot of uh, FPS games these days. Does any of the tech from Left 4 Dead 2 carry over to any other games you run? Um, I mean the principles of bunny hopping are the same. Uh. Most of the stuff that's in Left 4 Dead is pretty unique jank, you know, it especially comes down to like the game being 30 ticks and like being built for multiplayer and stuff. Um, but I mean, the movement is the same. Like if you know how to beat B-Hop in other source games, you know how to B-Hop in this game. It's just um, a little bit harder because you have to time the input. Well, a lot of bit harder. <laughs> So we are on the finale for Swamp Fever, and this is one of the main reasons that we needed a bot. So I downed Ellis with a pistol. I gave him the small blip, not the big one. That's because I specifically want him to have as much health. The cocky? Okay. As much health as possible, um, because I need him to not bleed out. Um, there's a lot of co-op mechanics in this game. This game is actually primarily speedrun as co-op. It's the most popular category, but solo is definitely rivaling it nowadays um, because there's a lot of really cool co-op exclusive tech, but you're going to see a little bit of a taste of it here. There's this thing called a stuck warp. So basically, if you're playing the game and you end up getting stuck inside some geometry and you can't move, that's no fun, right? Like you're going to soft lock and you're not going to be able to do anything. Um, so the game has a preventative method to keep this from happening. And what it is, is it teleports you to your nearest teammate or your nearest, uh, like actual player, non AI player uh, after 10 seconds. So what I did here is I started the finale and I got myself stuck on purpose. So now after 10 seconds, I'm going to teleport to Ellis since Ellis is down in the safe room. I can just be away from the finale and similar to the first campaign this entire area is now one big god spot so just like how i was standing on the railing and the enemies couldn't see me 
that same principle applies, but to the entirety of the outside of the area. So now I could just kind of ch chill, ch bing chilling, you know, for like a minute and a half uh, while the hordes spawn and then die and then the tanks spawn and then die. I do have to be careful. I could still die to specials out here, but they can't really path to me as well as they normally would. So it's not as big a deal, but I'm just kind of waiting now um, until the boat arrives. So we got a little bit of downtime here. If you got anything you want to plug or or whatnot, some questions. Uh, be a great time. Much good right there, but um, this is one chapter you're kind of just waiting, right? Uh, yeah, I guess my question is, how did they find this? Um, I mean, you just, that's a good question, honestly. Like, how they would find this specifically was probably that they used the grenade launcher to boost out of the map in co-op and then just was like, oh, well, you know, they don't path over here, so I guess it's All a right. god spot, right? And then it's like, trying to figure out, like, how can we get out of the map solo and doing a stuck warp. In co-op, you do lots of warps, so stuck warps and... Uh, Omni warps and all those different types of warps that utilize the going AFK function that you can't do in solo. Um, you just kind of apply that logic to to this. So I do have another question. Map. This is more of a silly question. Um, I I guess it might not relate, uh -huh. but I'm assuming you you know you play Left 4 Dead multiplayer every now and again, right? Do, uh -huh. Does any of the tech yeah. in the speed run apply? Like I know there's different patches because this is uh, down patch. Well, the modern patch is probably required for multiplayer. Uh, mm -hmm. Do you get to do any of the weird speedrunning tricks or like any of the busted stuff when you're playing against uh, regular people? Oh yeah, you definitely can. <laughs> um, there's a lot of the stuff, especially in the newest, newest patch. So when the last stand update came out, they patched a lot of the speedrun stuff um, for multi. But then they added another patch after that where they unpatched a lot of the speedrun stuff. So stuff like coaster skip still works on current patch now because they unpatched it um and like you could just do that like in versus games or whatnot you probably get kicked i mean <laughs> you're probably gonna get kicked anyways because it's left for dead but i mean go for it it's fun it's a good time and uh you can actually play multiplayer on any patch just everyone has to be playing on the same patch that's how co-op right. ones work so we made it to dead center this is one of the most important reasons that you want one bot instead of three. It's because you don't have any guns. You just start with pistols and downing three bots with pistols is slow. But not only that, um, you have to press the button to start the elevator like really soon after the start of the mission here. And that means that all of the teammates need to be completely dead. So killing three AI companions all the way with just pistols is very slow. So just that alone makes it worth starting on Dark Carnival. Do a little strafe out the window to skip like half the level and then get ourselves wedged in this door when the elevator's closing. Um, this will get us on top of the elevator and the elevator next to us has a hole in it. And that's actually specifically for verses. Um, but the geometry of the level is exactly the same in single player. So you can ride the top of the elevator and, uh, you know, when it's not too far, you won't die. You can drop down and just leave. And because the crescendo is triggered by opening the door, so is the fire. It just never, the crescendo never starts, and the fire doesn't spawn either, really, most of the time. Sometimes it does, but you could just kind of run to the ends. You could still get, like, random hordes and stuff, and still Drakakis, but, uh, not too bad. And we got exactly what we needed out of the first level, too. We got a boomer bile and an adrenaline, which is perfect. It's great. Very, very good. We're going to need the Boomer Bile for this level, and we want to save the Adrenaline for the finale. Because it's going to help a lot with pouring the gas cans. So again, really long level. Don't have to shoot all this too much. Just, just enough. Just down him. Make him feel bad a little bit. You know. That part, I definitely don't recommend doing in multiplayer. Is killing your teammates. Um, it is a speed tech, but that one will definitely get you picked. Oh. 
So there's a lot of different things that you can have as a sidearm. There's a lot of different melee weapons and you can obviously keep the pistols, but we're gonna wanna be carrying a fire axe or any other sharp melee weapon. There's a distinction between sharp and blunt melee weapons in this game. Um, and the utility difference comes down to, you can actually cut smokers' tongues as they try to smoke you with sharp melees. And so, especially when it's like 100% guaranteed spawn like that fire axes, you wanna pick those up all the time because you never know. Like you need every tool at your disposal to try to save you. Like you can't kill the smoker, he's too far away, but he's definitely gonna smoke you. You can always just uh, cut the tongue like a Chad, but it's definitely a scary move. Just like crowning witches is apparently. Do any of the guns, like, I know, like, there's two auto shotguns, like, there's the, I think it's Tactical and the, mm -hmm. I don't even remember the name of the other one. Are there any major differences between the two of them? They're basically exactly the same. Cool. Yeah, it, it doesn't really matter, and usually you're just farming RNG spawns, so you just take what you get, you know? Like, there, obviously, you get your pick of the litter, but it really doesn't matter, you know? Like, stuff like how well you manage commons and like what your RNG is going to look like and stuff's going to matter way more. Like nothing's really going to be decided by like what shotgun you pick up, you know? So here I threw a boomer bile uh, out of the map, which it is an area that the enemies could path to still. So they're all going to run to that boomer bile super far away. And since I threw it when I jumped, it's going to take a while to land. So it's just, they're just going to be gone for like ever. Like I'm going to be able to get the cola get out of there and like almost pour it. Yeah, see now they're just starting to come back. It's why you want a boomer bile there because it's just so much better than a pipe bomb or a molotov for that. And boomer bile is only spawn on that first level. They don't spawn on the second one. So you kind of need to get it in the hotel if you're going to get it. Otherwise you got to do a little improvising. And we're in the mall. That was a smooth they... whole entire end section right there. <laughs> well, thank you. These things do, in fact, still exist. Maybe not in real life, but at least in video games. When was the last time you went to a mall? I have no idea. Like 2010? <laughs> Honestly. I think I went to one recently because there's the uh, the Weeb Arcade uh, at one near me. Mm -hmm. And I like going to that. That sounds pog. Yeah, that round sounds one. like it might be worth going to. It's fun. But uh, outside that, yes, uh, it's kind of same. This is just what malls look like in real life now. It's empty. Oh. Excuse me, sir. So this is one of the rare sections of the game where you can actually get two of the same special infected at the same time, like I did right now. Okay, we're good. Uh, two chargers is literally the worst you could possibly... Oh my god, please stop. Game, you're giving me a heart attack. Oh my god! Yeah, two chargers is really scary. And in this uh -oh. hallway. Yeah. Uh, this is fine. Opium. I'll live. I'll make it out. Survive, please. Okay, we made it. We're good. <laughs> so, you know, aside the fact that I almost just died, that's actually kind of a good tank spawn. Uh, because there is a crescendo event here, and tanks cap the amount of common infected that can spawn at one time. So because there is a tank, there's going to be way less commons. It's going to make this section easier. I just needed to survive that somehow. And I did. So let's hope I don't die later, because that would be embarrassing and I'd have to do this whole level again. Please, comments, leave me alone. Don't. Sh okay, jeez. <laughs> Please, sir. What, I three you. chargers in a single level? Yeah. Ball sucks. This is why we don't go there anymore. All the chargers in the mall. Yeah. And now we got a horde too. It, this is this really did not want me to get out of this mall. I'm sure there's a Black Friday joke somewhere in there, but it's not November <laughs> anymore. 
Yeah, that was that's my split names actually. Hey, <laughs> for this level. <laughs> this is like POV. You're trying to get a uh, PS5 on Black Friday. Oh God. <laughs> I mean, it's All accurate. Right, <laughs> yeah, always the hallways. So this game has a lot of very strange RNG, you know, enemy spawns, stuff like that, stuff like that. Except for this part. This part is very traditional RNG. It's like, you gotta collect a bunch of gas cans. Where they are is random. Hopefully, we don't have to go to the third floor. That would be ideal, but we'll see. We only need to collect eight because it's on single player. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And of course, eight's on the third floor. This is probably the best of the worst RNG you can get. And, ooh, I had to use my adrenaline. That's right, because otherwise that tank was going to annihilate me. Um, hopefully we have adrenaline spawn somewhere too. There's a couple, couple of spots I could check. Cause uh, that makes this section way safer. Oh yeah, and since we have Ellis holding it down, holding down the fort in the safe room, uh, we can go down the elevator without starting the horde. And so we can just kind of go collect the gas cans in peace, kind of. You know, in in as much peace as Left 4 Dead can give you. And, um, and then get them all to the car, and then we could start the horde. Because we have to start the horde, we can't just fill it up without doing so. Um, but we can at least collect all the gas cans beforehand, and hopefully <laughs> not die, because this is a really slow part to die on. So. I, I do have a bile, which is good, but I'm definitely going to be checking for adrenaline, because you pour the gas cans twice as fast with adrenaline, so it makes it infinitely easier let's see over here nice okay we got drunk that is fine we take those grab an extra can why not on soul player do the spitter acid um does it cause fire to the cans like in versus that is actually only in versus thank really? god that would be so awful if that happened in solo Oh yeah, imagine. Yeah, that'd be huge. That'd be terrible, terrible, terrible. But now you can just tank the spitter. It's actually one of the better ones that you can get. Here comes some bull Find some gas, guys. Gotta wait so that it counts. It's also part of the reason I grab one extra can. Cause it's right there, and if you fill it early, then the cans don't count. But if you have an extra can and you filled early, it's like not a big deal. We're good though. Nice. Because you could just fill the next one. Uh, so I said that a spitter was a good one. That's because um, you can actually only have two special infected spawns at the same time, but they rotate really fast. So if you kill one, then it, another one takes the place of that one like immediately. Um, so if you have like a spitter and a boomer and they're not in the way, you don't want to kill them because you're like, well, that's just something that can't be a jockey. That's Pog. You want it to stay alive as long as possible. Um, same with spitters, because, like, they can't grab you, right? So, they can definitely deal some damage, but way less than, like, a jockey or a hunter or something. So here we're going to do a little tech called a common boost. Where, uh, so if you jump off of the common infected's head while it's climbing, the climbing speed actually gets added to your jumping speed, and you can use that to get out of bounds here. And uh, just skip like right through the zigzag shape level design in a straight line across the rooftops like it's verses or something. And uh, just get right to the end of the level. This is one of the shortest ones, like 42 seconds optimally. Pretty good. Um, that may be the shortest level, but Parrish has some pretty long ones. And Parrish is arguably the hardest campaign outside of uh, Dark Carnival. Um, Cause it's just super punishing. The level design is shaped like a zigzag on like every level and that means that the commons and special infected can just climb over the walls you know they can take shortcuts but you can't normally so that means very very punishing spawns um and also this is definitely by far the hardest level in the run because it's is very very precise and you gotta hit some tricks so i'm just gonna concentrate actually and i'll explain it afterwards
Bro, what a throw. Oh my god. He's insane. Very lucky. Shotgun upgrade. That's Pog. We needed a throwable for a trick that we're going to do on this level. Thankfully, I got lucky and I got one in the safe room, so I don't have to search. And here is where it gets really tense because there's a trick where I'm going to have to be doing a crouch hop, which is a bunny hop while crouching. Um, and I have to hit this bunny hop. If I don't hit it, then um, commons are going to show up everywhere and not let me climb up this thing. And I need to, to skip. So very nice. And then here we're going to be using a throwable to lure the commons all into one spot. And then I'm going to do a common jump off their head. Hopefully. Uh oh. Okay. Nice. Don't fall off the edge, Rochelle. Oh, okay. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, oh, we're Lord. good. Uh, yeah, so we use the commons as a step stool to get on top of the porta potties and skip the rest of the event. Um, but the horde is still going as well, so still gonna have infinitely respawning commons and stuff. And uh, if you don't have a throwable there, you have to like kite the commons into the corner, and it's just a night. This is awful. It's a nightmare. Um, so I'm really glad that I didn't fall off. It seems like I a very have another throwable. Ten sec uh, section. Yeah, definitely. That is the, the most butt clenched section of the run by far. Um, I, but now it's over, and I survived, so we're good. I was going to say, on behalf of chat, I can uh, relate to uh, one of the characters in the game right now. When I play Leopard 2, I'm just like Ellis. <laughs> just die. Dies immediately, get carried. Just, just team killed, just at the beginning of every Team level. killed at the beginning and beat the game, don't worry about it, I'll be fine. Yeah, it's all good. A win's a win. On common. Thank you. So this level is called Cemetery, and it's got another one of the bigger traditional RNG sections in it. At the end, there is a cemetery. I know, shocker. Um, but the pathway through the cemetery is random. There's four different paths. Uh, the difference between like the fastest and the slowest path is about 25 seconds. So it's actually pretty substantial, even for a game with this much randomness. Um, Nice, that was a really good common jump. Obviously, it doesn't really matter in this instance. Just don't die. But I'll point it out when we get there. Also, we really needed adrenaline because this water. Um, water slows your movement speed a lot. And having adrenaline negates that. So we were saving that from earlier. Specifically for that section. Also, got a really good tank spawn. If you spawned in this room, almost certain death. Cars everywhere. We spawned one room earlier. Saved me a lot of trouble, for sure. That's not good. Need to get up the ladder before any enemies. Okay, we're good. And here comes the RNG. Let's see what I got. Not worst. S best? Question mark? It's either best or second best. It is... Second best. Hog. Nice. Really good RNG. And we wanted to grab a pipe bomb and maybe an adrenaline for the next map because we're going to be doing another infinite stumble like we did in Swamp Fever. Um, and there is a chance that we get propane tank spawns at the spot that we need to do it. But if we get unlucky, don't get propane tanks. Having that pipe bomb is a really good backup. It's going good. I say that as we enter the quarter, which is the most notorious level in the game for killing runs. It's like basically you don't have a run until you get past quarter because it's very easy to die here. So I was kind of hoping that I wouldn't die three times on Dark Carnival because it would give me a little bit more leeway for, for this, but it should be fine. You know, I'll just, just don't die, forehead. We'll be good. Just play it better. Simply outplay the RNG. That was close. That's the nice thing about this game is that that, that is kind of a meme, but like 99% of the situations you get put in, you can outplay it. Like if you had enough foresight, if you were like skilled enough and experienced enough, you could see it, see it coming and prepare, you know? Um, I mean, granted, there is that 1% where you are just boned and there's nothing you can do, but... 
You know, it's 1%. Oh my god. Speaking of situations where you're pretty much just bones, I don't know how I lived that, but here we are. Alright, let's see. Do we get propane tanks? We do. Okay, nice. Make it nice and easy. Don't have to do any pipe bomb shenanigans. Can also bunny hop over that, but if you miss it, it's really bad. I'd rather just not mess with it. Yeah, I heard you. I heard, come here. I heard you. I hear you too. Quit crying. You too. Me, sir. Speedrunner coming through. Beep beep. Now I haven't had a take on this map yet, which is surprising. Oh, there he is. Spoke to the commentator's just, curse. Yeah, I I knew it was coming. Like, sad to say it, so it would happen. I'm just glad that he didn't spawn on the other side of the car. I know we can do better than that. Hawk, we didn't die in quarter. <laughs> Hell yeah. That's what you like to see. Alright, we're on the last map of the second to last campaign. This is the Parish finale. Um, people really tend to think this one's super difficult, but it's by far the most scripted. Um, so if you know what's going to happen, then you could deal with it pretty handily. It's not too bad. Because um, everything... And this game is random except for this level this level is pretty pretty straightforward tanks always spawn in the same spots the hordes always spawn at the same time it's really nice it's a nice change of pace you don't have to like put on your thinking cap and do like calculations in real time of like the odds of things happening and whatnot you can just kind of go i'm not gonna do any like minecraft speed run like doing math in the run and stuff. Yeah, you could just, you know, reset because you die to dumb stuff like that. This man just sniped me through the floor. I would like He's to just acknowledge that. He's actually insane. He just pixel shot me. You need to contact the, the server admin. Yeah, admin, he's doing it sideways. This man is <laughs> cheating. Uh. That's okay though. I mean, I was I was big up in myself. You know, that's what happens. You get a little bit of an ego. You're like, hey, this run's going mildly well, and Left 4 Dead's like, no. And for the most part, it has been like, uh, really, the only the last hiccup that really happened was like all the way back in Dark Carnival. So that's true. It's been a good run. It's been a very good run was, so far. Get, getting my, my my bearings back, my feet under me. I uh, if you guys don't know me, I'm Waifu. By the way, my YouTube is Waifu Runs. Real close to 100,000 subscribers now. It's big pog. I'm making video essays and stuff. Um, I stream and do YouTube full time, and I speed run a lot of games. Left 4 Dead, of course, it's my favorite, but also like Devil May Cry series, Resident Evil, all sorts of games. Doom Eternal, Dead Space, you know the good stuff. Gears of War. I was just uh, doing commentary for Flurby's Gears of War run earlier. Actually, have second place in that game, and uh, yeah. Just check me out if you're all interested. I'm usually not this funny or entertaining, but I at least try to be this good at the game most of the time. And hey, we didn't get smoked that time, Pog. Oh, the edge bug. I thought I was about to get sick hops for a second there. I'm pretty rusty. I, I de-rusted for like a day. But I have like over a thousand hours in this game, so uh, it's going pretty good. Practice went well, so I was like, all right, we're good. I was actually doing uh, some Devil May Cry Dante Must Die all collectibles speedruns. I just got the world record for that recently. That's what I've been, been working on. It's been quite fun. It's the, it's the Doom Eternal 100% Ultra Nightmare, but it's Devil May Cry, basically. All right, here we go. Finishing the parish, the second to last campaign. All we got left is hard rain. It's just
just one more campaign. Not too bad. Uh, this one's got one really cool, excuse me, one really cool trick on it. And uh, a lot of water. So if you like Bioshock, you might like this level. I don't know. Um, usually water is not a good thing. I wouldn't say it is in this case either. Alice. But we're going to give Ellis the blicky. We're looking for a boomer bile, hopefully, but we didn't get one. It's pretty rare. That's okay. The boomer bile is only a backup. We don't need backup strats. Everything's going to go perfect. No problems. Let's see it. So like Swamp Fever, we're going to be looking for a lot of adrenaline. Um, but the gimmick on this level is it's not only a water level, but it's also a backtracking level. The two best things in game design. Um, so we're going to be looking for adrenaline spawns on the way through, but we're not going to pick them up because they're actually going to be there on the way back. We want to save those for the way back. So I got two defibrillators in the ambulance. Horrendous RNG. Couldn't possibly be worse. Things are going great. Because um, when we come back through here later, it's all going to be full of water. And so it's going to be a lot harder to traverse. So we kind of want those adrenalines. It's okay though. Safe room can have up to five. It can also have zero. You know, it just depends. How does Gaben feel? Do so you just want to steal my whole Steam wallet or like, are you going to give me a knife? It just depends. It's, uh, Left 4 Dead speedruns are basically the CSGO crate opening of speedruns. So I don't see an adrenaline. I think I might be getting a Tech 9 Sandstorm here. I think we're, we're getting nothing, probably. Yeah, no, no adrenaline. At least I got the Boomer Vial, though. That's fine. What we're really looking for, though, is we want a, we want a propane tank for this level. Um, so we can do a skip for the Crescendo. Um, and we're going to have to carry that to like the end of the level. And hopefully not die. That's usually the objective, but I thought I would specify this time just in case you forgot. Hard rain, lots of witches. Usually not a problem. You can just crown them. On easy, it's super simple. You don't even really have to aim for the head. You can just shoot them in the back. Um, I didn't really explain it, but this is the category is any difficulty, which means that you are allowed to play on any difficulty, as the name suggests. Um, and what that entails is I actually have a key bind that lets me swap between easy and expert on the fly. Nice boomer bows. Um, expert is useful for dying faster when you get grabbed, as well as killing your teammates, because you can't actually do team damage on easy. Finally, an adrenaline and a propane tank. Nice. Um, and easy is, well, it's easier. So hopefully you don't die as much. Although, definitely doesn't make the game easy. That's for sure. It's still balanced to be played with four human players. So, you know, take that as you will. So here's the propane drop. Big Pog. The explosion actually stops you from taking fall damage and uh, makes it so you don't die to that drop and it lets you skip the crescendo event there. The reason I am super low under the propane tank is because this game has a thing called lerp or interpolation, and the hitboxes of enemies and objects are actually intentionally behind them on their trajectory path. Like a hunter, when he hunt, like pounces at you, you have to melee super early because it's intentionally built that way to compensate for server lag. So when the game is lagging, the hitbox and the model will actually line up because, you know, Valve was like, the servers aren't going to be very good and people might be playing this for a while. So with bad internet, especially at the time when the game came out. So let's make it so that it's fairer for high latency gameplay. But that means when you're playing solo and there's literally zero lag, the hitboxes are like super messed up. They're like way far away from where they're supposed to be. And you can actually change that with a console command called Blurp. Um, but I play on default Lerp because I'm lazy and console commands scare me, quite frankly. So I don't like to mess with them. Um, I don't want my game to break. Or Gaben to, like, sue me or something. I don't know. Like, just, I don't touch them. But you can make the models more accurately line up with the hitboxes if you adjust your lerp. 
in the console. And you don't even need to use SP cheats to do so. It's quite nice. Yeah. Look, another thing. You know, actually, I can't really complain. I have a nickname. It's called Tank on Every Map Waifu. And I usually have a tank on every map. Um, because I'm just very unlucky, I guess. But this run's not been too bad. It's been quite a few tanks, but this hasn't been every map. It's like every other map, at least, you know? You take those. That's a it's dub. It's only hiccups, but nothing nothing too bad for the rest of it. Yeah, I mean, you can't really expect a Left 4 Dead. This is my, my estimate is like an hour and 10 minutes, right? Because, like, my PB is 52 minutes, and, like, I could reasonably get like a 48 minute time with loads removed at the very, uh, uh, you know, but the game's random, man. Can't guarantee anything. So I'm like, I just play it super safe. Make the estimate kind of high. And you know, you don't want the run to go perfect. I always say like good marathon run shows how good gameplay looks, how bad gameplay looks and how you adapt to things screwing you over. And uh, you know, if, if I didn't die the whole run, then you'd be like, wow, this game looks easy. But, you know, if I die like five times, you'd be like, wow, this, this game's hard or this guy's bad. But, you know, that's a gamble I'm willing to take, I guess. Uh, speaking of dying, can you cease existing immediately? Okay. I didn't mean me, but that works too, honestly. A reroll. Maybe I don't get a tank this time. <laughs> This means Ellis just gets it one more time. Goodbye, sir. So I gotta change my route quite a lot here because I don't have extra adrenaline. I only have one. And that means that I need to save it for the end of the level. Otherwise, you have adrenaline in the ambulance and you'd be able to use that about halfway through. But I gotta take these roundabout pathways because I don't have that luxury to run, fortunately. Also, uh, oh, go ahead. yeah, go ahead. No, you go ahead. That's all you I was going to say, uh, we are approach I think we are approaching near the finale of the run, so if you have any shout-outs, feel free to go from. Yeah, I got plenty of time while waiting for the boat to arrive. Yeah. But, uh... Pause, champ. That smoker's kid. Oh, and I fell off the wrong side. Yeah, this is great. This is really good. Oh, my. Oh, no, 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 no. This is, uh, what we like to call not good. It's a technical term, I think. What was that? Is there a tank? Someone was throwing something. So if you have perfect bunny hops, you actually don't get the water slowdown, but you can't see the ground. So that makes it kind of hard to time your bunny hops. Ah, right, we're good. I lived. Planned. I was going to go too far underestimate. So I just, you know, let's waste a minute or something. <laughs> All right, we're at the finale now. Gotta shoot up Ellis a little bit. Remember to switch it back to easy. A pipe bomb, clear some commons. Get into quite possibly the scariest god spot in this game. Can't kill Ellis too much because he'll spawn in the potty over there. And that's not good because you want him to die. Oh, that's not good. Oh, we're good. This scout spot is really scary to get into for obvious reasons. Um, if you fall down there, you die. <laughs> but it is like definitely the best scout spot. And it's right next to the boat, so it's perfect. Yeah, this is a great time for shoutouts and stuff because just basically this is the end of the run. We're just waiting um, yeah, for the boat to pick from? us up. So yeah, like once again, if you guys don't know me, I'm Waifu. I speed run a bunch of different games. Devil May Cry, Doom Eternal, uh, Left 4 Dead, obviously, uh, Dead Space, Resident Evil. If any of that interests you, definitely come follow me on Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash waifu. Um, if you are into video essay speed running content, 
I'm really close to 100,000 subscribers on YouTube. It's uh, YouTube is waifu runs. Um, and uh, I don't know, love this game. Left 4 Dead's awesome. If you're at all interested in speedrunning it, go to uh, speedrun.com slash L4D2. Join the Discord, ask questions. We got tons of tons and tons of resources and whatnot. Plenty, plenty of people willing to help. You could always jump into co-op runs and whatnot. It's a good time. And um, yeah, if you have any questions, you can always ask me as well, just on my stream or whatever. What I'm working on currently is I'm working on a lot of Devil May Cry 1. So I'm Dante Must Die, which is the hardest difficulty, 100% and all collectibles runs. Um, just got the world record for all collectibles. Gonna try to push it a little bit further. Want to get the world record for all the Dante Must Die categories. And then I'm probably gonna be hopping on Elden Ring when that comes out. So... We'll see if I like it, speed run it, all that stuff. It'll be a good time. And as as uh, I say that, that's the second tank. Once he dies, Virgil the talking boat will be here to save the day and uh, end my run. Put me out of the misery that is dying in Left 4 Dead. Can you guys hear me? And uh, it was a good one. Honestly, it looks like it's gonna be like a 103 RTA. Not bad considering I died like seven times. <laughs> yeah. It was like pretty, pretty solid. Couldn't ask for much more. Uh, really appreciate you guys having me on and stuff. It's always a good time. Of GDQ. It's a fun time. It was a fun run. Hell yeah. If you haven't, uh, Flurby did a run earlier today for Bargain Bin that I was commentating on of Gears of War. And uh, I actually have second place in that game, and I did commentary for that run. It was a really good run, so if you haven't, you should go check that out as well. I'll be on the GDQ YouTube channel and whatnot. That's time. GG. Yeah. Nice. 102, 103-ish. It's a pretty solid run. But, uh... In memory of Ellis. Yeah. Oh, R.I.P. the homie. He took the L like every every mission. But yeah, thanks so much for having me, you guys. Appreciate it. Love you lots. And uh, always happy to do it. Just let me know. Yeah, thank you once again. Uh, if anyone uh, did miss the uh, you know, the channel, we'd be posting it in Twitch chat. You can find Waifu there. And uh, we are going to be right back really quick with our final run of the night. But before that, we're going to take a quick wellness break. This is time to stand up, touch your toes, stretch your legs, and do what you need to do. Uh, before you do go, though, uh, just to mention, if you're watching this on YouTube, go to twitch.tv slash gamesdoneclick if you're ever interested in looking at our live content, uh, starting most nights around 7 p.m. Eastern and weekends at 1 p.m. Eastern. We'll be right back. All right, welcome back from the break. We are back to speedruns from the crypt. If you're just tuning in, we are a bi-weekly horror games. Anyway, now that we're back, uh, I have no way of better introducing the next game than saying, we just saw two runs, so now it's time for Saw 2 run. Anyway, enjoy that terrible pun, because up next is Saw 2 Flesh and Blood, featuring Jewhorse. Take it away. I don't feel right. I'm playing this game on a Bishibashi <laughs> controller on a, as a horse. I'm joking. Hey, my name is Juho, Jewhorse. Welcome to Saw 2 Flesh and Blood. So, the last time when I ran this game was on, uh, um, Ecdysis' show again, uh, back in, like, September. So, this time I'm actually gonna do something very different. Um, since it's Black History Month and also we are, we're doing the, the theme of Black Protax, I'm actually gonna save Michael instead of the other character. Uh, I will talk about it later on in the game, but yeah. Uh, if you guys do not know, Saw, Saw actually had a game. They had, like, two games. The, um, this one is... I think it's made by made by Zombie Interactive, and then it was published by Konami. So this is technically like a Konami game. So, um, yeah, um, Xbox is fastest. <laughs> I don't know how, why, but uh, Egg brought me into this game, and I was like, yeah, I'll speedrun it. But anyways, we're gonna start off with the game. Three, two, one, go. All right. So starting off, you're actually playing as a different character for now until. Like, the main protagonist actually comes along. But you are playing as uh, Kembo. And Kembo over here is actually going to be cutting off his uh, lower part of his eye. So, a content warning right at the beginning of the game. So, if you're going to be very scared about blood, yeah, th there's that. 
But yeah, uh, you know, I probably should have mentioned that. <laughs> yeah, I forgot to but I forgot to mention it as well. So whatever. Uh, you got you guys are gonna see like eye cutting for the first part, anyways. But yeah, um, yeah, you get into this like trap from Saw Two, like the actual movie Saw Two, and then yeah, um, yeah, you get out alive. You don't die like how the 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 guy who was in Saw Two who had the, the Venus fly trap actually died as well. So yeah, uh, other than that, yeah, you're playing as Campbell. And Kembo is a ca cancer patient that uh, he has like two choices. One, he could live and reunite with his son, who is the same age as um, who's the same age as Michael, or he could sacrifice his life and actually save Mike uh, save Michael's his life. So we're gonna do the second one because we don't wanna save him at all. The last time I did that, I saved him and everyone died. So this time around, we're gonna save Michael instead. But yeah, um, this game is, I would say is, can I say worse? Worse than Saw 1. If you ever play Saw, the video game, this game is a lot worse than Saw 1 because there's a lot of quick time events and the combat is a little bit different than uh, the first Saw game. But yeah, uh, there are a bunch of stuff that uh, you need to do in this game. A lot of puzzles. I love the puzzles in this game. Also, very realistic uh, lock picking. Just saying, very realistic. And also right away, we're gonna get another trap right here. This is like the same concept as Saw 1 where you have to hit the button to finish the quick time event. But instead uh, of giving one, they actually give two quick time events for yeah, some reason. Anyways, another quick time event right here. <sighs> A lot of quick time events. Oh my god. I remember like no, watching- Yeah, what's up? <laughs> I was gonna say, it's Saw 2. Of course there's two quick time events. Oh god. The puns. But yeah, um, at the beginning of the game, I watched, like, the speedrun of this game. I was like, what is this? There's, like, seven different quick time events in the first, like, three minutes. I was like, oh yeah. Also, we get to see the rammer. We got, we, we, um, the rammer is gonna come back, like, really soon. But, like, I love the rammer. Rammer's, like, my favorite enemy in this game. Because he rams. <laughs> and I can joke about one thing, but Ecdysis told me not to. If you know yeah. about the joke, <laughs> if you know about the joke, yeah. Also, oddly yeah. enough, uh, Juo is not kidding. The The actual canon name of that enemy is just called the Rammer. Uh, also, Which... yeah, I'm gonna do this uh, um, puzzle right here. This is called a polarized puzzle. So you have to match the red and yellow together instead of going for red and red and yellow and red. Uh, yellow and yellow? Oh my god, yellow and red. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, another quick time event. That's a lot of quick time events in this game. My main objective in this game to no is to not die. That's all. I just need to not die in this game. If I die, then yeah, it's tragic. And also to beat my uh, my marathon PB of 143. Because <laughs> my estimate is a 145. I hope to not die a lot. Alright, we're gonna wait over here for about like 30 seconds to a minute. But yeah, um, basically the, the, the story of this game is that um, Michael, which is the son of... David Tap? Yeah, David Tap on the first game. So David Tap um committed suicide during the first game. If you had if you ever like played the first game, uh if you ever got that freedom ending, spoiler alert, sorry. <laughs> uh his dad actually committed suicide. So he comes back to the dad's apartment and and actually checks out the apartment. Uh you meet a few people along the way which I would talk about um later on. And then later he gets transported into the um, the place where Jigsaw actually hosts the game hosts the games at. So, yeah. Anyways, we're gonna kill Campbell. This is how you kill Campbell. Wee. All right, he's dead. And then Saw Two, flesh and blood. Wow. <laughs> but yes. Um, right now we're gonna go into the next chapter of the game. And yes. Uh, this ending will uh how you say will stamp its approval with uh michael's ending so yeah anyways we're gonna meet a few people along the way we're playing as michael right now so we meet um henry this is jennings jennings is actually from the first game which is pretty cool and then we meet joseph we're gonna meet henry and joseph later on in the game and then we're gonna meet this hottie oh this hottie oh sarah i love you not really all right i'm gonna look at the wall right here because it's actually easier for me to actually go by like this 
So there's a lot of camera manipulation in this game. Uh, it's made in Unreal Engine. There's a lot of camera manip and also like movement manip uh, because it's Unreal Engine. But yeah, you see Pigman behind and then yeah, you get knocked out uh, or Michael gets knocked out and we are transported into the hotel where the games begin. All right. Now we're going to meet this guy. This guy is Solomon. He likes money. Uh, I don't remember what Solomon is. Do you remember what Solomon is? What the dude? He's like a, a he's Jigsaw's accountant. There you go. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, he's he's the accountant. So yeah, so you do like a cage race. Oh yeah. You want to go ahead or I go ahead? Oh, I was gonna say the whole story of the Saw series has always been dumb. It's fun, but it's really dumb. Yeah. Uh, by the way, we did a cage race. Um, so we're barefooted, just like how our father was. Like father, like son. Uh, this puzzle is also like father, like son because you have to put in the the numbers. Uh, anyways, by the way, uh, all the lock puzzles in this game are kind of fixed with its uh end result. The uh start result is actually or the start of the locks are kind of random with its placements. It's not the same as uh saw one with its placements. So it could give you like random numbers, but you have to put in like the numbers in the um fixed. And, uh, fixed way, sorry. My bad. My god. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, we did a cage race, and then, um, Michael didn't win the cage race, so Jigsaw says, like, Oh, yo, we're gonna give you a second chance, because I like you. Uh, and also because your dad was in the games as well, so, yeah. Also, yes, a lot of CRTs. Uh, anyways, we get this, um, crutch, and here comes the combat. I love combat in this game. This combat is so great. I love it so much. Not really, I hate it. Uh, we have to fight this guy, which uh, apparently he knows our dad. So uh, we're gonna wait for him to actually do that attack, and then wham, wham, boom, he's dead. Rest in peace. 07 in the chat, F in the chat. <laughs> but yeah, we're gonna take his uh, his fuse and his nail bat, and we're gonna use the fuse right here, right now. There you go. And then I'm gonna take a health hypo. So, at the beginning of the game, I'm gonna take like a few health hypos. This is gonna be very useful for the next chapter of the game because there's gonna be a puzzle where initially, like, you have to like look at the puzzle and then just um, skip, uh, I mean, do the puzzle, but I'm gonna skip the puzzle immediately. And uh, the health hypos would actually um, help out a lot. So yeah. Alright. Uh, we, we see this guy. We're gonna get this guy exploded. So rip him. Um, if I remember about the story about this guy. This guy is somewhat of a stalker. So uh, we don't like stalkers. Smile, I guess. I don't know. Uh, he's dead. Rest in peace to that guy. That's a lot. There's gonna be a lot of F's in the <laughs> in the chat for this game. I'm gonna do a really cool skip, and I hope I can actually get the skip. No, I can't really get the skip. All right, whatever. So the skip is that if you can bypass this guy, you can hold this nail bat for the entirety until the next enemy. But because he doesn't want to move, uh, yeah, I'm gonna take this bat instead. So this bat disappears right in front of your eyes, and yeah, cool comes back anyways I'm gonna go to this door right here I need to hit in five four three zero that's it and here's a gear puzzle so this gear puzzle is actually uh, something from the first game but it's actually much more easier than that but we only get to see like this this one gear puzzle and that's it <laughs> anyways pick up the key and we are gonna go here there you go Alright, bless RNG time because I need the nail. Come on, first try nail. First try nail incoming, please. Yeah! Oh yeah. <laughs> Alright, there's like three places that you can take the nail from. Uh, if you get the nail from there, it's actually really good really good RNG. So, yeah, I got really good RNG from there. Also, uh, can I can I say that I'm on world record pace at the moment? <laughs> You can. Yeah! World record pace! Let's go! <laughs> uh, but don't jinx it. Oh no, probably. Uh, but yeah, uh, the reason why I say that is because uh, there's only three runners in this game. 
Uh, me, Ek, and one more guy, which is uh, Air Shark. All right, we get this uh, new puzzle, which is the light puzzle, the light circuit puzzle. It's actually easier and really good. Uh, but later on, you get like a few different like colors later on, uh, like green and blue. This is a floor tile puzzle. The floor tile puzzles are actually really fixed. So um, different floor tiles puzzles are like different sequences. So this is heart and tape. Then later on, there's like three of them, and then afterwards, there's four. All right. Here comes a cool little skip. Bam! Skipped. Easy. <laughs> I don't even know why that there's like no hitbox on that one. So whatever. Anyways, we're gonna meet meet this guy. Yo, what's up, dude? So because I don't have the nail bed, I can't really hit him like uh instantly, or I can't kill him instantly. We're gonna like three hit him. There we go, and then one more. Boom, he's dead. Alright, cool. Oh, rip my bat. Oh yeah, by the way, every time you do combat, even if you have a weapon, your your weapon will like like disappear or like it's just one one time usage and then that's it. It's kind of horrible, but sure. Anyways, another quick time event. Hopefully I don't fail any quick time events because I <sighs> You have anything to talk about because this part is gonna be like a bore. Let's see. Uh, when you're routing this, because I know you got world record in this game recently, were you able to find any new tech since the last time this was on the show? No, <laughs> no. Well, that's a good answer. <laughs> yeah. Um. Uh, it do be like that sometimes, as they say. But yeah, I can save a lot of time to be fair though, because uh, mainly the time saves are usually on puzzles and. Uh, a little bit of routing, like a little bit of good routing, I guess. But yeah, none of the there's nothing that changed uh, other than at the time when I ran this game, I actually changed a few things in the routing, uh, which will come out like really soon as well. <laughs> so yeah. Anyways, this is another floor puzzle. It's uh, if I'm not mistaken, heartbeat, foot, nails. So yeah, that's what I'm gonna be doing right now. All right, that's that's good. All right, here comes um plank. I for I totally forgot to talk about the other plank, but yeah, the the plank in this game is that you have to mash uh left trigger and right trigger together while using your left analog stick to balance. This is not the same as when you do it on like the first game. The first game you have to use two uh both of your analog sticks to balance and walk, but for this one you have to spam the uh left and right triggers to walk, and then the left analog stick to uh what well, balance anyways we're gonna use this axe i don't even know why <laughs> my axe is gone just one time use man <laughs> uh but yeah we're gonna see that bat later uh we're gonna see the axe later on but whatever that was a one well, Joe, it's use. actually a good thing though think about it why Tap Jr. is just so strong. The moment he hits anything, the weapon shatters. Oh, yeah, that's true. See? <laughs> He's that strong. Anyways, we're going to do this uh, sliding puzzle, I guess. This is sliding puzzle? Card puzzle. There you go. So this card puzzle, take like less than a minute, but like the timer will be like, oh, you have to finish this puzzle in like three minutes, but like we speed running. <laughs> Egg, when are you gonna go come back to this game, honestly? <laughs> Soon. Soon TM! Alright, we got a confirmation. Soon, Soon TM. TM. Yeah, because the last time when he ran the game, um, there weren't really the skips that I actually found, so... Also, uh, quick shout out, or quick, um, call out, uh, Schmumbler, please run this game. <laughs> I know Schmumble really wants to, wants to run this game, but yeah. Anyways, we're gonna meet this guy. Hello, guy. Uh, here comes a, a skip. I kind of had to like skip this button right there and then uh, punch him like two more times. So it's actually faster to skip like that. I don't know why. Is this faster to skip like... <gasps> no! Okay, cool. I thought I was like not taking the crutch. Um, weapons can actually like go out of bounds for some reason. It will clip out of bounds if like... Uh, enemies just falls like oh, wrongly, I guess. But yeah, um, we're coming. We're coming to the like this puzzle right here. God, 
I can't even speak. <laughs> but yeah, we meet Zeke. So Zeke's uh, hands are in the trap th that you see in like Saw 2. If you know about the chick who uh, puts her hand in the same exact trap to reach for antidote. And then she was like crying all the way. She's like, no, I want to escape. I just want that antidote. It's like, nope. Anyways, we uh, we get to watch Zeke get, uh, I, I guess, uh, dragged out by Pickett. But uh, Zeke is going to come back later. Basically, the, the lore of Zeke is that he touched little kids. That's it. And then he, he, he gets his hands, like, all screwed up. But yeah, later on, we get to see Zeke again because Zeke is uh, one touchy person. Like, pun intended, touchy person. Anyways, we we're going to go further into the hand. <laughs> Anyways, we're going to get into this uh, puzzle right here. I'm sorry. And uh, we're going to meet uh, our first um, person to actually save, which is Henry. So if you if you know about Henry in the first part of uh, the chapter, um, the first part of the chapter, you get to see like a few people in the game. We get to see Henry right here. And Henry's on a trap. And we have to do this light puzzle. I hate this light puzzle. Please don't. Uh, you can explain about the light puzzle if you want to, but like, honestly, the light puzzle really sucks for me. You want to explain? For lights out? Yeah. Yeah. So lights out apparently is like a math game. You have this grid of well, a certain amount of squares. Yeah. And the general idea is you need to get them all turned off. Mm-hmm. Uh, the last no, one, <laughs> the oh, last one, I actually use a solver because I can't be ours to uh, do the oh, puzzle. Oh yeah, it's a pain to do the puzzle. It <laughs> I can't is be a ours to do the puzzle. puzzle. But yeah, if you actually like uh, run out of moves, um, Henry will actually die to that trap. But yeah. Anyways, the next one is Sarah. Oh, the hot chick, dude. Yo. Can we get a crazy ass of a hot chick? <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm a bit, like, hyper today, I guess. I don't know why. Anyways, um, we get strapped onto this, uh, shotgun trap thing. Uh, basically, this shotgun vest, if you're near to some kind of a device that actually beeps, like, uh, actually makes the shotgun vest beep, like, quickly enough, uh, it, it could kill her. It could kill him. Uh, luckily, luckily enough, there's, like, no enemies that also wears, like, these kind of, uh, vests as well. So, that's really good. Anyways, we're gonna go and pick up that hi uh, health hypo. That health hypo is gonna be very, very important. It's the last health hypo that I need before uh, doing uh, the skip. Sounds like something rather on the All there. right, there we go. Get this gear, and we're gonna do a skip. Uh, a very cool skip. Uh, basically, we're gonna skip uh, quick time events. Uh, <laughs> if you do the quick time events, it's actually slower. Then not doing the quick time events, so I'm gonna hope to actually just uh, do the quick time events anyways. Uh, not to do the quick time events, I just need to focus on them. Alright, do that. And then go through this um, steam stuff. Alright, reach out for the key. Spend my A, please, thank you. And then we're gonna skip the quick time events, so... Here's why, if I, uh, if I skip the quick time event, it's faster. I will show you what happens if I don't skip the quick time event. Right here. If I don't skip the quick time event, yeah, you save health, but it's longer than not skipping it. So yeah, that's a comparison of skipping it and not skipping it. Anyways, we're gonna use that key and use it for this door. We're gonna use the health hypo for a bit, because I need to. And then we're gonna do this puzzle. This puzzle is really, really bad. I don't like this. Alright, cool. I'm gonna look back and then move forward and then boxes. And this guy fell, falls into the boxes and then it's dead. Rip him. But we're gonna go up. So anything you want to talk about about this game or anything lore lore wise because i know the last time you talked about lore wise in this game as well lore in this game is quite cursed yeah it's very cursed I mean, that's all i really have about this game it is i don't remember what you game. said but you said like uh something about pomegranate juice 
But that's the whole plot of the game. The whole reason this game happened is because detect the you know tap in the first game didn't know what a pomegranate was. Oh yes, of course. I'm not even kidding. That's like the major story beat. Mm -hmm. Uh, by the way, this puzzle is to add up two numbers together. So you add up two numbers together, you get seven. Easy. I don't have to do the math. All right, there's the pump. So our objective of this uh chapter is to actually get a pump. Uh. Pull out all the water and then turn off the electricity in order to actually like uh, save the hot chick. But uh, we are gonna do a lot of a lot a lot and a lot of objectives along the way. But yeah, here comes the next skip of the game, which is to actually skip the puzzle. So as you can see here, there are there's like TVs and you need to memorize the 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 whole um, uh, patterns and stuff. We're not gonna memorize the patterns. We're just gonna skip it like this. It's easier that way, and uh, don't ask why, it's just easier. So, how do you actually do this puzzle? Oh yeah, there we go. Alright, I'm gonna heal up, and then go through this puzzle as well. There you go. Uh, how do I do this puzzle? I am very bad at this puzzle, oh god. Uh, wait. See, I am very bad at spawning these kind of puzzles. Alright, there we go. Gonna take the valve and then we are just gonna run off and get into this place right here. All right, cool. Now we can push the pump, the pull pump. Uh, I might. Hmm. Should I? Should I just wing it and not take the health hypo? Hmm. Yeah, I'm just gonna wing it. Yeah. So <laughs> I'm gonna wing it anyway. So. Uh, later on, there's gonna be a rammer, and I'm gonna hope to not hit the rammer. Because if I hit the rammer, it's gonna be really bad anyways. Oh! G-Man! Wait, that's not G-Man, it's Henry! So, Henry is back, but his objective right now is to actually kill, uh, Michael. Because Michael has, like, some kind of, like, um... I, I think secrets, I guess? I, I don't remember, but, like... Uh, his intentions are, like... Oh, he's thinking is like, if Michael uh, gets out alive... It could, like, uh, jeopardize the whole police department thing. So they want him killed in order to not uh, get him, like, out of the um, the place instead. So, yeah. But like I said, everyone just dies at the end. So, who cares? <laughs> Alright, so we're gonna push this pump. <sighs> what do we talk about now? <laughs> Yeah, what do you want to talk about now? Oh, you've been having a good day so far, Drew. Oh, uh, my day? My day has been starting. Uh, it's like... What time is it? 2, 2 p.m.? Yeah, I live in Singapore, so like... <laughs> it's not spooky for me. It's just afternoon spook. A spooky doesn't need a time. True. It can be spooky anytime. There might be ghosts right behind me right now. Spooky. You know, there very well might be. Oh, shit. <laughs> Anyways, look, I'm gonna take this uh, health hypo just in case because uh, this health hypo really works out well. And here comes the next rammer. All right, we're in the Scotland. All right, I'm gonna bring this guy towards this wall. There we go. Really good first hit. I like it. So I had to bring this rammer towards this wall in order for him to actually fall. And, uh, you're gonna hear something pretty cool. <laughs> what is that? Oh, Wilhelm. Yes, Wilhelm. Oh, <laughs> Oh my god. Okay, D don't, don't... You guys didn't see anything, alright? I, I closed my eyes for a sec. I should have closed my eyes. And, uh, Michael fell. But we're gonna do Did you to... fall in? Yeah, I fell in! I fell in by mistake because I, I, I was like trying to close my eyes for a sec. I should have closed my eyes, but uh, we, 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 we're back here. Don't worry. Don't worry about it! You guys didn't see anything. I didn't see it as well. Don't, don't worry about it. Ah, great. One death. <laughs> Anyways, uh, we're gonna do this these balancing beams and uh, yeah, we're just gonna go through them. Yeah, don't, don't, don't question about my, my antiques. 
God, I'm so hyper today. I don't know why. Maybe all the excitement from this uh for this run. All right, we're gonna do this uh, polarized puzzle because this polarized puzzle is pretty. Uh oh, God, it's actually pretty bad. Oh no, this polarized puzzle is so bad. Help! There we go. Cool. All right. This puzzle is 815. Wow, that's actually really good RNG. I've never gotten that RNG before. Oh, first time. Uh, but yeah, okay. So the, the premise of that puzzle is that uh, you have to go into the right side of the hallway. So at the right side, you get to uh, do like some sort of puzzle and you have to shine your light onto like glow in the dark uh, stuff. I, I, I wish it was ultraviolet instead. Uh, ultraviolet? No. Is it ultraviolet? I don't remember what's it called. What's the thing that... The purple light thing. <laughs> Shine your purple light onto the... Into the room. Find out the mess UV they UV lights? Did. Yeah, UV lights. There you go. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, choose you for things like uh, blood. Yep. And Joe, remember you're on world record pace? No, it's still on world record pace. Don't worry. It is? Yeah, it's still. Oh. So long as my timer do not go above 33 minutes and 30 seconds, I'll be all good at this part. <laughs> but yeah, uh, we're going to bring this pump. And, uh, it's it's coming by. It's coming by quickly. Uh, generator is going to come by really quick. Uh, really quick. God, I'm not really that hyper to <laughs> any more of my runs at all today. <laughs> So how many times have I been back on your show? Like this is the like, seventh time. <laughs> I don't know how this man keeps getting invited back. I don't know, I don't know how I got here. back. I don't know how he keeps getting invited back. Look at this dude. I don't even know. I'm friends with Egg. <laughs> That's all I can In say. In fairness, you're one of three saw run saw two runners. Uh, I'm one of them. You're the other one, and then the other person's been dormant for a few years. Yeah, I miss that guy. That guy should uh talk to me sometime soon. Small. But uh, I, 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 don't really fairness, talk, uh... I don't even talk to that guy. But uh, yeah, uh, shout out to Airshock. Airshock was the was the, the first guy to run this game, and then Ek and I picked it up. Anyways, uh, that's a that's a neat camera nip. But manip, oh my god, camera nip, manip. So if you move your camera towards the left, you can actually just go straight towards uh, the ladder. Uh, if not, you have to turn immediately, which is kind of like a, a bad kind of thing, I guess. All right. Go through this door, and we're gonna meet a conversation between uh, Henry and Joseph. So Henry and Joseph are actually teaming up together just to try to kill Michael because Michael is like the bad person, like so-called the bad person in this place. So yeah. Um, another puzzle right here. Uh, nine, three, eight, and then here comes the floor puzzle that I have to be very quiet for. You can talk about it, honestly. So the four puzzles in this game generally just have the general idea of uh. No, talk about this one general, specifically. Right? Oh, this one? I don't even remember the order. Uh, I think it's like, ta what, tape? Tape pills, pills, camera pills. But, yeah. there's intercha interchanging uh, tiles right here. So you have to make sure you step on the right ones. Mm -hmm. uh, even if they mess with you, if you step on the wrong one, it'll give you a nice little shock. So you're kind of meant to go in order the whole time. Yeah, I need to concentrate on this because um, one wrong move and I'm pretty screwed. Right. So oh kind my of god, yeah, the that's the wrong of, move. Oh. <laughs> oh. I knew it. Luckily, it's not too punishing. Yeah. And while you're doing that, I'll continue to kind of explain the uh, the general gist of, uh, I guess, what's going on. Because it might seem like this is randomized, but nope, it's always going to be the same route. Um... The main thing, though, is if you get on a bad cycle, you'll kind of have what happened to Juo there, where you no, get just zapped by the electricity. No, it's just a bad button mashing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But it's a fixed path. Yep. All right, cool. There you are. All right. I need a... Uh, should I pick up... Yeah, shit. Okay, I'm going to pick up this health hypo because... Yeah, safety strats. All right, let's go. All right, here comes uh, the first of a few um, picture puzzles. So I need to concentrate on this one as well. Uh, all right, blade gun. Is it blade gun? Yeah, blade gun. Gun knife. Okay, gun. 
uh, poison. Uh, is this the noose? Yeah, that's the noose. Uh, let's, okay, that's the knife. I don't remember what this one is. Okay, this is this. And this is this. Alright, cool. 58 seconds to spare. That's actually pretty decent. For my standards, I guess. A, a very good run would be like a 1 minute time save or whatever it is. Also, best line in this game. I love this line. Henry, what the fuck I know, right? Alright, we get to avoid Henry's uh, gunshots, but we have to run. So, um, like, initial gameplay is that you have to hide uh, or cover yourself um, with, like, Henry's uh, gunshots, but you don't really do that instead. Uh, what is this puzzle? Because I don't know how to do this puzzle. Alright, here comes a movement manip. Uh, I'm gonna hope that I actually reach the door. There you go, reach the door. Easy. So, like I said... Uh, because this game is actually made in Unreal Engine, you can actually move around while the camera is still panning. Um, yes, my dude, this game sucks. I agree with you. Whoever timed, <laughs> whoever timed them out, I agree with that guy. Anyways, this game sucks. <laughs> I'm so sorry. They try. They, they try. I mean... Okay, but yeah, we get to save. Uh, we get to save. Uh, the the hot chick. Um, basically right now we're gonna do a pipe puzzle. This pipe puzzle is very, very, uh, like, how you say, uh, very, how, how do you say this? Annoying, that's what annoying. it is. Annoying, yes, okay, there you go, it's annoying. So, I guess it would help Joe explain here, the general idea is that the water is going to be flowing and you need all the pipes to match at the same time. So, you just have to time it and hope to god they line up the first two aren't bad but the third one requires you to hold two pipes are you kidding angles, and you you'll see how frustrating it can be it can take forever to get this if you uh okay cool. don't get it right plus you have a bare uh, you have a minimum amount of time to actually solve it plus you, know you can right. actually soft lock here soft lock. thank you thank you so for moving i love you yes why the soft lock happens we don't know it just happens mm-hmm But yeah, there's gonna be two places that I hope to not soft lock. I'm jinxing myself. Uh, this is the first one, and then the second one is gonna come out like really, really soon. Anyways, what's my time on here? What's my time on here? <laughs> also, I will say, uh, the run is live. However, chat is pre-recorded. Yes. All right. I don't know what's my time over here, but like I, I, I assume that I'm below 33.30. <laughs> Anyways, uh, next uh, chapter. Uh? You enter the door right on exactly 33. Oh, heck yeah. <laughs> Yo, we'll record pace the score. <laughs> but yeah, uh, the next chapter is actually uh, uh, Joseph. So I don't know how Joseph actually, like how you say, um, gets into a saw trap. He was talking to Henry, and then afterwards he got into a saw trap. Like, how? Henry? I, don't, I mean, sorry, Joseph? How do you do that? Uh, let's go with this thing. Oh, wait, no, it's not this thing. Oh, wait. Oh, this is the, the reverse thing. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I know I know about this one right now. Um, I'm gonna mess up the puzzle. Don't worry about it. But, uh, initial, uh, how do you say this? The puzzles are all fixed in this game. It's just that, like, whatever, like, orientation it is, I'm just really bad at it. All right, so yeah, uh, you get to see like Joseph, and then Joseph gets uh put down into this like contraption. But yes, uh, we get to see colors later. But yeah. Anyways, we're gonna do like a few objectives. We have to like switch a switch and then get a handle just to activate the elevator to go down and actually help Joseph. All right. Gonna go into this panel. Thank you very much. Uh, where's my crosshair? I'm gonna my crosshair. My pointer. I was trying to find out my pointer. Um, there we go. All right, cool. No soft lock. No soft lock. No soft lock. Yes, yes. <laughs> All right, cool. So the soft lock happens if, like, if the cutscene actually shows this door actually sh shutting. 
and it's really bad because uh, if the door shuts, you have no way of getting in at all. Rather than just restarting the game all all over again, I guess, or just restarting from a uh, what you call what you call it flashbacks? I guess I guess that's called flashbacks. But yeah. Kind of like a chapter selection sort of yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, chapter selections, yeah. Anyways, we're going to shut off this electricity right here and then go to that door. Uh, the puzzle for this one is actually like three minutes long, and I don't like it. Uh, let's see. There we go. Alright, we're going to uh, activate this thing, lift this uh, crate up, and then we're going to move backwards. And then, we hello, guy! Seems like you're the one. Oh, God. Seems like you're the culprit. Who shuts the elevator door? Shame on you. All right, there we go. All right, we pick up his pipe. Really good thing. I like it. And then we're gonna go through, um, I guess the the first of many shotgun traps. So in the first game, they actually introduced like shotgun traps where like you have to disarm the tripwire in order to uh, go through the, the shotgun trap. This one, however, all of them are quick time events. All. Oh, wow. I hit the cutscene. That's actually really stupid of me. Yeah, if you go into like the right side of the place, uh, there's a cutscene that actually hits. And it's really bad, but uh, whatever. Just a, a few second time loss anyways. Anyways, we're gonna meet our favorite guy who has the gun. <laughs> funny, enough, funny enough, you can actually get a gun in this game. I don't know how, but I've seen people actually taking the gun and the gun soft locks the game. Like, no joke. It soft locks the game. Do you know how to get the gun, by the way? No. Yeah, I don't even know how to get that, get the gun even. Like, I don't even know how people actually got the gun in the first place. All right. Multiple quick time events is gonna happen right around here. But yeah, if you ever have the gun, it soft locks the game completely. And I have no idea how people actually get the gun anyways. Anyways, we're gonna take this valve. And yeah. Another quick time event is gonna come up really soon. I think there's like two two quick time events that's gonna come up. One is here. And one here. All right, we're gonna save this guy. This guy is Anton. The backstory of him is that he actually splash acid onto people. And we don't want to splash acid on him because if we splash acid on him, we have to fight him. Uh, so we are going to be nice to him and not splash acid on him. And he gives you a key. Either way, like, if, even if you have to fight him, you also get the key, nevertheless. But, like, we need him to not uh, fight. Oh, wait. What is this puzzle? Um, we need him to not fight us because if he fights us, it's actually just kind of bad. <laughs> That I'll lose my pipe. That's all I could say. Anyways, we're gonna meet uh two chicks. Sarah and a new character, which is Kyla. And Sarah's like, oh, I forgot the backstory about Sarah. Sarah's a druggie. Can I even say that? <laughs> sure. Yeah, that is the okay. Story. So Sarah's a druggie and she would do anything for drugs. I kid you not, anything for drugs. Well, you're missing part of the point though. What what's the part of the point? She's supposed to be a mole. Yeah. She's reformed. I guess, but she's not really that reformed anyway, so... Right, but she's a mole. That's the point of the story. Oh my too. god. It's I a am... dumb story, but she's a mole. I guess so. But yeah, she... Oh, what? What is wrong with me? <laughs> okay. Focus. Focus on this puzzle right here. There we go. You tried your best out there. I tried my best, and I missed it like three times. Fuse bad. All right. Um... Here comes dynamite, or uh, like some kind of bomb puzzle, I guess. So you're gonna push these two pumps towards the X, uh, while avoiding these uh, dynamites right here, or whatever it's called. Like if you touch those dynamites, 
Or pipe bombs. There you go. That's what I meant. Uh, pipe bombs. If you touch those pipe bombs, it will explode you immediately. I don't want it to happen like the same thing that happened during uh, the time when I ran this game on the same show. Uh, but I will explain what I mean by that. Anyways, uh, go on this pump, please. Thank you. Alright. Uh, do I wait for this one? Oh god. Oh god, this might be bad. <laughs> I guess I, I, could, I couldn't back up. I forgot I can't back up. Alright, that's two. But anyways, the, the, the checkpoint is like right behind us. Anyways, it's like right near the, the whole thing anyways. God, I, I jinxed myself. I hate it. I jinxed myself. <laughs> That's how they get you. Man, I'm jinxing myself everywhere. Anyways, uh... Alright, there we go. Please don't. Thank you. Uh, okay, cool. Alright, last one. Please don't. Please don't do this to me. I don't want Michael's bubble butt to actually hit the, the pipe bumps as well. Thank you. I'm gonna wait for this one. I'm gonna be very cautious right now and wait for this one. There you go. And then I'm gonna move back and hopefully not do the same fate, please. Alright, cool. Alright, cool. Nice. Alright, so, um, like I said, there's another camera manip or camera panning and then you can do a movement manip where you have to, uh, Move back um, around that area. Oh god, I am very low right now. I'm, just, I'm gonna heal up immediately right here. Because I have like four health hypos, which is really good. Uh, but yeah, uh, as I was saying, yeah, with the whole camera panning and the movement manip, you can just like back up. Uh, I did, <laughs> I did, I did back up the last time around and uh, it killed me because of the camera manip. I don't know why, but sure. Anyways, uh, we're in this gas... I can't say that. Gas room? There we go. Gas room. I'm not gonna say the other word. Because I'm afraid if I get... Um... I don't know. People might get triggered for that. Or whatever. Um... I'm gonna go down this ladder. I'm gonna use a health hypo along the way as well because I need to. There you go. Use a health hypo. Use the nail for here because I need to. Uh... What is this puzzle? Down, down... A lot of downs, I guess. Yeah, downs. Alright, there we go! Uh, I'm gonna take this health eyeball just in case because, um, safety reasons. I need this health eyeball. E. Okay. Alright, another, uh, light circuit puzzle. Hopefully, I don't mess up like how I messed it up, like just now. Uh, this is the easiest one, please. Wait. No, are you kidding me? It's the same pattern? Are you- Oh my god, it's the same pattern! Uh... There we go. Okay, cool. I didn't want to mention about this, like... Usually, like, these kind of uh, puzzles, they could, like, interchange into, like, different kind of solutions as well. But... Uh, yeah, the, the whole start, uh, orientation of the puzzles are kind of, like, random. So you would never know what it is until you, like, see it, like, closely enough. Alright, there is a guy right here. We're gonna attack this guy because we need to. Did I miss my quick time event? I missed my quick time event. What? Why? Hey. Aya. Aya, aya. <laughs> aya, aya in the chat. Alright, I'm gonna take this bat and then I'm gonna take a nail out of him because it's gonna be, uh, time safe to take this nail. And then we're gonna do this uh, puzzle right here. Uh, this is four, five, two. There we go. I'm doing this with memory so far, so if I ever need my notes, I can just like look up my notes. Uh, move. Uh, we can touch the asset in this game, so touching the asset is like not really a big deal, as you can see here. There you go, touching asset, pretty cool. All right, here comes the next rammer. Uh, I'm gonna shut this door and then open it. And then the rammer should come. 
Uh, can I just heal up for a bit? There we go. Alright. Bring me the rammer. Thank you, mister. Alright, let's go. Close the door. Get out. Oh yeah, uh, the all right. So, uh, where the rammer is is that if you go into that area, um, basically he gets dragged out. But at the same time, uh, there is like, uh, routing for hundred percent if you go into that room anyway. So like hundred percent, you have to pick up files, voice, voice, audio stuff, um, Billy puppets and puzzle pieces. But we're not doing hundred percent. We're doing any percent anyways. Anyways, we're gonna push this, push this cart. Push it once more. And, yeah. Alright, here comes the auto-scroller part of the, pu uh, of the game. So, over here, it's pretty auto-scroller light. So, you have to wait for this dynamite trap thing to actually, uh, like, go towards the end of the conveyor belt. And um, right now, I'm actually gonna push it towards the end of the conveyor belt. But there are traps along the way that uh, will prevent uh, you from actually taking it. As you can see from the, uh, the what do you call it? Plunger? Plunger, I guess. It's, I don't know what it's called. It looks like a plunger, I guess. I don't know. But yeah. Um, bat? What? The bat? Or what do you mean? No, no, no. The, the, the thing that's uh, on the dynamite trap. Whatever it's called, the circular thing. Oh, I got you. I got you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever it is. Uh, so if you push, if 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 the plunger gets pushed, right, um, the dynamite trap will actually explode, and inside is the is the uh, is the handle that you need to actually uh, activate the wait, hold on, activate the elevator, so that we need, so we need the the handle. But we have to do this uh, whole, like, not letting this plunger actually uh, push towards the dynamite trap. If not, yeah, it would, it would explode. Anyways, this is the last one, anyways. Uh, we're gonna see a guy who's gonna uh, fail a quick time event right around here. Yeah, he failed a quick time event after this guy. Didn't do fast enough. There you go. All right. I I like how people are saying that they did did they don't know that Saw actually made two games. I'm quite surprised. Yeah, a lot a lot of the. Uh... I think the licensed games in the 360 era just weren't as popular as they were in older eras. Yep. Probably with the advent of being able to get whatever games you want in the modern age, you didn't have to settle for playing, uh, you know, The Crow City of Angels on the PlayStation 1 because you didn't have any other games. You had options. Yeah. I'm going to wait it out right here. Like I said, this is an auto scroller. So once I get the trigger or the... Handle, sorry. Hand. Uh, once I get the handle, I can actually activate the elevator and I can go down and Also, do we found out the word you're looking for, Juo. It, it was detonator. Detonator! There you go! Woo! <laughs> but we didn't push you the detonator! Think, uh, you can think, why me in chat? Why me? Yeah. Why him? <laughs> why you? Well, they gave you the information. Thank you. Anyways, we're gonna save Joseph. And we're gonna see colors. Uh, this part I think you you need to explain because I need to concentrate on the the colors. Michael. Uh, please do so if you want to. There we go. Wow, good RNG so far. Good RNG. But yeah, you have to. Co uh, do you want to explain? I'm very bad at explaining this one. Yeah. So the idea here is that each of the there's nine options and they all have colors around them. In order to get the light going, you need a color uh, to connect to a color, as you can see with like all the uh, the whites and the yellows and the reds and the blues. 
Am I'll I... tell you what colors you do need to connect going in. Um, so some can like connect to others. Uh, the general idea is you need every single one to light up, and there are multiple things that you can light up, but you want to make sure that you are getting uh, everything done. So there's only like, one or two solutions that really allow that. This puzzle is actually pretty easy, and it's pretty fun to do. But it does take a lot of thinking, because uh, the more you're looking around, you might notice, hey, wait a minute, uh, I have to lock that option out, because that won't work, and that will prevent other ones from happening. And then you kind of assume that some of the games, uh, you have to have that color, and it's pretty fun. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, we saved Joseph, and Joseph is like, Yeah, thank you, boy! I love you, boy! Thank you for saving me! Also, like, we don't have to, uh, take care of his cat because he's not dead yet. Someone is waiting for your help. You know the line. <laughs> if I die, take care of my cat! <laughs> uh. Anyways, uh, we meet Carla! Hello, Carla! You were talking to Sarah earlier on in the game, but now you're trapped. See, I don't even understand, like, how... Uh, people get trapped in this game. Like, people get, like, escape and then afterwards get trapped again. Alright. Uh, we have this bat. Yeah, we have the bat. Which is really good. Alright, we're gonna punch this guy out. Boom. Boom. Thank you for your X. Thank you for your patronage. <laughs> uh, we're gonna use the handle that we actually got. We're gonna go here instead. And it lifts up a uh, metal... Whatever it is, metal cover, I guess. And then we're gonna go down to the letter. Alright, there are gonna be a few things that I have to do along the way. And uh, I'm gonna try to explain about what I'm gonna do. Anyways, uh, another puzzle right here. If I need to remember how to do this puzzle. There we go. Um, there we go. Alright, so we are gonna push carts. Uh, but there's gonna be a few like minor skips that I will be doing. It's pretty cool skips. I like it. It's made, uh, it's found by me. Alright, so I pull this cart. I'm gonna pull it again just by going like right here and then it clips through the wall. It's actually faster than like just going around. Alright, mash the buttons and then we're gonna do another move movement manip. And we're gonna push this cart towards the trigger. There we go. Easy. We're gonna push this cart in. And then we're gonna pull this cart out. And yeah, that's the first part of the puzzle. Now we're gonna do the second part of the puzzle right here. Uh, basically right now, it involves with the, uh, the, the box that would activate the shotgun call, uh, shotgun collar, shotgun vest. Uh, but, it's kind of an alright kind of, like, puzzle because this puzzle actually doesn't really take that much time. Once you know how to do it, you can do it, actually, so yeah. I feel bad though. Unfortunately, there's no out of bounds uh, out of bounds stuff in this game. There are out of bounds stuff hey, in the you first one. You never know. Yeah, I'll never know if I. I don't want to play this game. <laughs> I, uh, where's Schmumbler? Schmumbler said he wanted to like run this game. Come on, where's Schmumbler? I love him. Well, I'll see. Yeah, come on. Anyways, uh, we're gonna meet Molly Man once more. We saw Molly Man in uh, Sarah's chapter. Now we're gonna meet Sarah. Uh, no, wait, we're gonna meet Sarah. We're gonna meet Molly Man again. Hello, Molly Molly Man. Where are you, dude? We're gonna watch this. Yeah! Woo! Alright! Dying by fire! <laughs> so sorry. Anyways, um, um, another lock puzzle right here. Alright, and there we go. We get this coupler, we're gonna take another nail from this dead body because we need to. And then, uh, open up this thing. This one is a 5x5 five five grid puzzle and I really hate it a lot. Uh, because if I make like way too many mistakes, I am kind of screwed. But, hopefully I don't make a lot of mistakes along the way. Uh, wow, already making a lot of mistakes to be fair though. Um, I'm gonna make this like this, and then like this. 
Uh, so the the puzzle orientation is actually just fixed, but uh, like I said, the start is always kind of random. So yeah, I need to like concentrate on these things right now. Um, wait, what am I doing? There we go. There we go. Activate that, and we're gonna go to the door. And go to the door. There you go. Now hurry up. There isn't much time left. <clears throat> Alright, going to this door. Another quick time event. <clears throat> another quick time event. <laughs> I'm just gonna say this another quick time event. There's plenty of quick time events that will screw you over in this game. If you're not fast with your quick time events, good luck with you with this game, honestly. Anyways, another uh, color matching puzzle, which I don't know if I would like it. Um, am I doing it wrongly? I'm probably doing it wrongly. There we go. Alright, so in that puzzle, I have like two phases. One is the one that I just finished. Two, the second phase is that if there's a cutscene, it kind of sucks because it's going to take... A while for uh, the wall that Hello? is about to crush you to actually Hello? like um, right, to actually open up the door again or like um, push back so that the door will open again but whatever uh, we got in like one face which is good anyways we meet Sarah and Sarah's like very sympathetic she was like oh, I'm sorry man I didn't know that your dad is like uh, blah 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 I don't remember what she said but like she talks about your dad she said she says like Oh, you ruined your dad's life? Fuck you. That's it. <laughs> Just, that's it. I'm sorry for saying that, but that's the line. <laughs> I'm never going to come back and visit this. I'm just going to say this one in once and that's it anyways. <laughs> uh, anyways, we're going to do this puzzle right here. Um, how do I do this puzzle? Is it this way? Yeah, it could be this way. There you go. It's move. Uh, it's towards the blue area. So yeah. They give you like a lot of signs that is pointing towards blue, and you have to just smash the blue, and that's it. Anyways, last valve right here, and then we should be good. And then uh, Sarah says she's sorry. Because it's not your dad's fault, and then she gets dragged away. Yeah, she just gets dragged away. Anyways, do you have anything to say? Nothing to say? Okay. So over here, I'm just gonna be waiting. That's it. Uh, but later on, the next part of the next part of the game is to actually like make a bomb. Yeah, you, you have to make a bomb right here. So, once you make this bomb, uh, it will open up a metal door, and then afterwards, there's gonna be, like, a rammer that's gonna come by. Uh, yeah. Uh, can I just do here? Oh, cool. Alright, cool. Alright, here comes the, the bomb making puzzle thing. I just need to uh, uh, concentrate on a few parts over here. But yeah. Uh, Egg, what do you want to talk about to be fair though? Uh, for what, the bomb making puzzle? Uh, no, in general because like this part is just gonna be going towards the bomb puzzle. Like really. Well, I know one thing you talk about is how you're gonna be skipping one of the, I guess, intended mechanics. Uh, this game has a few puzzles that are kind of like, hey, you need to look around the room and find out the answer, but since you know the answer, you can just sort of type it in early. Yep, which is this one. So this puzzle answer is actually going to be skipping that entirety of the uh, intended mechanic. Mm -hmm. I hope I'll come back soon. <laughs> I I'm sorry for saying that as well. <laughs> but it's very, very intended with the whole lore thing uh, on Sarah's part, actually, so yeah. Am I good? <laughs> Am I good, actually? Probably. Probably? Okay. Thank God. <laughs> just a one-time thing. It's just a one-time thing. I'm just saying that. 
Anyways, uh, here comes another gas room where we have to shut out the gas. Uh, I need to find a coupler in, like, one of these three carts. It's like a one, one in three chance. Oh, wow, I got, like, really bad RNG. Cool, whatever. Um, oh, God, what is this puzzle? Yeah, what is this puzzle? How is this puzzle that bad? Uh, I think it's... Wait, hold on. I think it's like this. Ah, yes, okay, it's like that. Can I do this? Thank you. There we go. Okay, that took me a lot of time for some reason. So I'm gonna be uh, going for this cart right here. I'm taking the half high point and just going, gonna go down. There we go. Alright, I'm gonna do a little skip right here. You opened up this door. That's it. Skip! So, basically... <laughs> All I'm gonna say is that you're gonna do this puzzle. This puzzle is like the same thing as what you do in the first game where if you want to save Amanda, you do this kind of like, um... Uh, what's it called? Like, puzzle? Whatever this puzzle is. Vial puzzle, I guess. You have to uh, transfer the red to the red part of the vial and the blue to the blue part of the vial. But yeah, um, basically... You are here just to make bombs and explosive, and you need like two ingredients. I think it's ammonia and something else, which I don't remember what it is. I would just look at it later. All right, last one of these puzzles. Oh god, uh, this, 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 this. We jump down. We go here. There's a guy right here. We're gonna punch this guy out. Goodbye. And hoping that the bat do not clip into the wall. Because if the bat clips into the wall, I am screwed. Luckily, it didn't. Alright, ammonia and this one more thing that I do not know what it is. Paint thinner. There you go. You made, you use ammonia and paint thinner just to make a bomb. Cool. Alright. Yeah, you can explain about this one because I'm very bad at explaining about this one. Uh, this is pretty easy. You have two colors, and they'll go down the opposite way. It's kind of like how Saw 1 is the similar puzzle. Um, there's also yellow. Yellow is the third color, but it's actually just, like, bad, toxic. It's, it's trash, so you want to get rid of it mm -hmm. when you can. Um, every time you get it, it's bad, because you'll lose time, because it doesn't help you at all. Mm -hmm. Ideally, you just want to get uh, blue and red, blue and, and red. you want to make sure you send it to the appropriate side. Because if you mess up, you only have a lot of three mistakes. Uh... You need two of each. And that's how the puzzle works. All right, cool. Thank God I set it to the right orientation. There we go. All right. Little skip. <laughs> Little skip right here. You open up this door. You save like maybe a few seconds. That's pretty cool. All right. We're going to put the bomb right here. I'm going to stand at one corner right here. And I'm going to hope I don't go near so that the explosion doesn't hit me. There you go. All right, explosion didn't hit me at all, which is really good. But, but, we're here. We've come to the cage. Are you ready, Ek? The rage cage? The rage cage full of rammer! All right, we're gonna bring this rammer towards the, oh god. Oh my god, you are fast. Oh, he's born to ram. He's born to ram. Okay. Let Don't me, you just me love how every boss fight in this game is the exact same guy, but, like, slightly different? Yeah. Where is this? Oh. Hey, he's ramming, but now it's electricity. Hey, he's ramming, but now there's a cliff. There you go. Alright, so my objective right here is to not actually get hit. Oh. Wow. Can I bring him one more time right here? No, I couldn't. Alright, whatever. There you go. Ow! What what hit me? Well, I didn't realize that hit me. Are you kidding me? Okay, whatever. Uh, where's this next one? Yeah, I really had to con concentrate on this one. This is like a little bit of a run killer if... Oh, God. Run killer if, like, the... 
the rammer doesn't really go towards the uh, goes into your favor sorry but it kind of goes into my favor for now which is really good can i do the skip nah i can't do the skip all right so if you mash your buttons actually quickly enough you can actually make uh michael move which is a good thing but because i didn't get it whatever at least i was near the door there are some parts where, like, if you're far away from the door, you can try to do that manip, but, like, uh, it doesn't doesn't really work out that well. Anyways, here comes Zeke again. And I had to do these quick time events right here. Because, as you can see right now, Zeke is with knife arm. Uh, knife hands. Sorry, knife arms, knife hands. Look at that. Aww. Look how cute he is. He goes into the vent. Oh, oh yo, he's venting. Sus. <laughs> That's the only thing I can say. Sus. He's vent. He's he vented. Sus. <laughs> but yeah. Anyways, we're gonna uh we're gonna go and save Carla right now, and Carla has a math problem kind of thingamajig, and I don't like it. <laughs> All right, here we go. Um, can I explain this? Yeah, I I guess I can. So. Um, before the puzzle starts, I will tell you this. So, how the puzzle works is that the there is going to be, like, two numbers that you need to look at. You minus the numbers together and divide it by two, and then use the the, the panel to actually match, uh, no, add the two numbers up. Uh, I think Echo will explain a little bit further on what I meant by that. But I need to concentrate on this, 12-6. So, I want to say it's randomized every time what the total will be. But, um, you're given a certain allotment of moves. It starts on four, but then it'll go down to three, and then eventually two. So you only get that many, uh, moves to equalize the two bottom numbers. Now, the way you want to do that is each row four will add to the total. So if you have, like, you know, one, two, three, four, all that will add into one big number. However, the other side will also have numbers. So you have to take away from the larger side and give it to the smaller side so it can equalize. If you mess up, she mm -hmm. dies. So don't yeah. die. But yeah, it's just basically just math. Just take the two numbers, minus the two numbers, divide divide it by two, and then find the panel, uh, find the, the switches that adds the numbers together. So, yeah, there's that. It's a good math puzzle. I think on Insane, it's actually worse, because the math puzzle would actually give you, like, what? Like, they would give you, like, 64 minus, uh, no, 64 and 28, and then you minus and then divide it by two, and it's like, God, you need a calculator for that. But, the only good thing about that puzzle is that there's no... Like, th there's no time limit. That's it. If you want to use a calculator, you can definitely do that. But, uh, because this is a speedrun, I'm just speedrunning math. <sighs> Perks of being an Asian. <laughs> it's knowing math. Anyways, uh, next chapter. Or this is the second last chapter as well. So this is, um, if I'm not mistaken, this is, a uh, Solomon. Right? Yeah, this is Solomon. Solomon's this chapter. Right, there we go. I'm gonna go towards this color panel thing. Um, oh, how do you do this? Is it like this? There we go. Cool. Okay, I think we got it. All right. So, right now, the door is open for Carla and I, or, or Michael, and Michael, sorry, but I need to lift this up because we are blocking the way. So, right now, we made a path for us. There you go. Good path. Alright, we're gonna see Carla for, like, the last few times. So, Carla is, like, right there. She's scared. And then Henry comes! Hello, Henry! So Henry is right now like trying to keep uh, Carla captive because um, Michael doesn't want to give himself in, if that's the word, I guess give himself in. Yeah, yeah, and and uh, he doesn't want to like sacrifice his life so that um, the the police department gets saved. And yeah, 
I don't remember what happened with the police department though. It's like kind of corrupted or something, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, they're like selling drugs. Yeah, yeah, yeah there you go. Yeah, yeah, spot. drugs. Anyways, uh, they introduced a new color. This is the final color that you get introduced to, which is blue. So yeah, you get like green and then yellow and then last one, which is blue. Alright. Crawling. Ah! Someone did ask about the bat. <laughs> so, to the person who said, uh, why am I using the bat right now? Basically, this bat is gonna be used for here! And we're gonna use this bat to hit this guy! <laughs> Great timing. Great timing of words. There you go. And then we're gonna try to take then this it just shatters. nail, and then where's the nail bat? Here. There we go. So I'm gonna take this nail. This nail is gonna be very useful for the, the final part of the game anyway, so yeah. Alright, one quick time event right here. Need to not uh, mess up the quick time event, that's all. All right, we need this nail right here. Basically, we're gonna ignore the uh, the trap that is right behind us, and do this thing. All right, cool. We're gonna take this coupler, and uh, this is another five by five grid. I crap, I don't even like this one. Um, how do you do this? Wait, hold on. Put this down. Put this to the side. Do that. This up, yeah. So the these kind of like puzzles are actually worse than the light puzzles because the light puzzles are actually better, or like the the colored light puzzles are actually better than um, these polarized puzzles. But it's cool. We actually did it anyways. Anyways, here comes another rammer, and we're gonna do like a uh, high to low or low to high, I guess. So let me concentrate on this. There we go. That's it. It's the same puzzle that you actually get introduced um, in the beginning of the game where you have to save the guy who, uh, the backstory of that guy is he's, he's a stalker but because we didn't save him, we didn't get to, uh, no, be because we didn't get to uh, do the puzzle, we didn't really save him at all, so yeah. Anyways, here comes another puzzle. This is a perspective kind of puzzle. So the perspective kind of puzzle is that you have to look into like different places and then look into the perspective of, of the 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 numbers and stuff but because we know the numbers be um like beforehand um we can actually put into this thing right here uh five is it two two seven eight there we go uh all right now you can see like one of the perspective puzzles right here because uh if you see the glow in the dark puzzles right here oh there's a little eight there also, hello guy. He's in a he's in an all right angle, I would say. Also, yeah, as you can see, the hitboxes are cool, pretty cool, cool hitboxes, I guess. Anyways, we got this uh this pipe. Really gonna be useful for the next part of the the game because there's gonna be another rammer. I love rammers. Open up this door. There you go. So the reason why we went through all this pain is because we needed to like deactivate the electricity because the electricity is actually running through that door. And if you touch that door, you get an electric shock. So by just running through this puzzle place and like getting like the, how you say, turning off the uh, electricity, then yeah, you can de technically do that. And uh, yeah, it's just the electricity and yeah, you can open up the door. Anyways, here comes the final part of Zeke. And I'm gonna be very cautious about Zeke because Zeke right here is very close to us. And also there's a lot of quick time events right now. Alright, I need to pass by him. Come here. Thank you. Oh, wait. There we go. Get out of here. Run! Run, Michael, run! 
I know you want your hands back. I don't want... Alright. So I'm gonna go through this maze right here. Uh, and then hope to god that I don't get one of the quick time events. Because this quick time event actually uh, will be a time loss. Ah, it's a time loss. Alright. You can technically skip this quick time event, which is pretty cool. Uh, if, if Zeke is actually slow, but Zeke goes actually really quick at that point. Anyways, we're gonna kill Zeke. We're gonna say goodbye. F's in the chat. Uh, F's in the chat for Zeke. F's in the chat for Zeke. Goodbye, I Zeke. That guy in F. Well, F. That's it. Too bad. Oh. <laughs> um. We're gonna do this puzzle again. Um. Oh yeah, I wanna ask. What is your favorite character in this game? Oh god, they're all terrible. <laughs> I'm gonna go with Tap. Michael Tap? Really, both of them. Okay. Yeah, the reason. Yeah, this, this game is. something. I don't. I, yeah, I actually don't know who I can actually like in this game, to be fair, though. Because Zeke is like. No, all these characters are like kind of. eh. They're all terrible Michael's people. Cool. Yeah, they're all terrible people, but except for, like, Michael. If I'm not mistaken, Michael is, like, the only good guy in here. He did kill his dad with a pomegranate. True. true. Very true. <laughs> Dang. Alright, there we go. Cool. All right, uh, this part right here is to actually transport a box towards that red little out outline or yeah, red highlight. So right now we're just gonna go all around and then isn't this part the, no, this part's not the rammer part, right? This part's the rammer part? Yeah, this part's the rammer part, I guess. So you're gonna see the rammer like pretty soon. Um, 485 is the puzzle. There we go. Can I open up the door? Thank you. All right, here comes Rammer number five. Is this Rammer number five? The boss fights are very creative. Yep. So Rammer number five is with spikes all over his body. That's all I can say. Oh God, please don't. All right, this is the first attack that we can do. Boom. All right, hopefully I can actually do this in one shot though. Pick up the... Oh, there we go. Last one. Oh, this might be clean. This might be very clean. Oh, no. It is not clean. Rip. Okay. Well, I had to, like, bring him around then. Bring him around town. Oh, what? Are you kidding me? Oh, huh, huh. oh no. Come here. All right. There we go. It's quite, it's quite clean. It's quite clean. I would say. Would you think it's clean? Maybe. Maybe. Alright, cool. But yeah, uh, that rammer, if you hit on that rammer, is gonna be really bad. Anyways, uh, this puzzle is skull, knife, knife, something, if I'm not mistaken. I don't remember what it is. Skull, knife. Gonna wait for the last knife. Knife hand. There we go. And now we can actually open up the door right here. So open up this gate. Sorry, not door. Gate. Open up this gate. We can actually go and push the cart right now. The boxed cart. And we're going to do one little camera manip or movement manip right after this part. So I'm gonna mash my my A button right here, and then once I end up with this um, pushing puzzle, I'm gonna uh, bring my analog stick to the right, and then hopefully go into the door like that. So that's a a little skip. It only saves like maybe two seconds, but it's still a good skip. Anyways, here comes another uh, TV puzzle, which is uh, kind of horrible for me. Carlos Solomon. 
Oh god. This is actually really bad. Carla. You can explain about this if you want to. Uh, this is the same type of game as earlier. Um, you notice earlier um, we had the one where it was, Hey, here's a symbol. You need a match with another symbol. However, this time it's the names of all the characters in the game and the oh represented... Oh, represent God. representation of their item. Um, okay, the difference, cool. though, this time is you can't brute force it because they count the amount of mistakes that you make. So if you make too many, uh, the room blows up and you die. Yeah. The way it's intended, you're supposed to get the answers in the right room. Uh, they just tell you all the details of all the characters. Or I think it's, like, on the table. But even still. I Is that table? No, it's, like, TV. No, it's, uh, yeah, it's a table, yeah. You're right. Yeah, it's like one of the two. Uh, there's like two different rooms that have it. Yeah, so like on the, the room to the right, if I actually gone to the room to the right, is actually like a table of um, all the characters in the game and also what they uh, what they are. Some, somewhat occupational something is. So yeah. So you have like that tap tap which links to like family and then um, Michael which is links to the newspaper because he's a journalist. I forgot to mention about this. Michael is a newspaper journalist, and that's why, like the I I, I guess the police de department really wants well, no Henry and Joseph in particular really wants him to be uh, killed and to be quiet and because of the journalism that he has. Anyways, this is Solomon. Hello, Solomon. All right, we're gonna do like uh, the first phase of the puzzle, which is to actually push these carts. Uh, but basically what this uh, trap is is that Solomon is actually trapped at the moment and we need to push uh, uh, We need to create a path in order to um, to get him out of this kind of like weird contraption thing So yeah, I'm hoping to do most of them in like one go There you go. I'm hoping to do the 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 next puzzle in like maybe Two go, two go, so one go. If I could actually do it in one go, that would be great. Because it's actually time time safe. Alright, four minutes on the clock. Um, hammer, pills. This is the same thing as they give in uh, Saw 1, by the way. Um, what's this one again? Oh, camera, yeah. Shotgun. Uh, by the way, these are all random. So I'm trying to find out which one is random and stuff. Um, okay, shotgun is this one. I don't remember the, the, the top one. Uh, I'm gonna bring this. I'm gonna pull this in. Right here. There we go. Uh, oh god, where is the thing? Like, oh, there we go. This is this. Uh, okay. I guess I know where everything is right now. Please, please, run! All right, cool. We got it. There we go. We saved Solomon. All right. So final chapter of the game. We got it. We, we got here, boys. Final chapter of the game. What is my time, by the way? Uh, it looks like you're around 123-ish. Yeah, it's not really <laughs> world record pace anymore. <laughs> you tried your best. I tried my best, but I did the best commentary I get. I I, I can give. I hope. Oh, well, only chat can decide. Yeah. Anyways, uh, we get to see Solomon, and Solomon is like, Yo, I'm gonna jump down this pit. Uh, basically, that pit is like the, the same pit as uh, Saw 2. A lot of Saw 2 references in this game, by the way. Like, the movie references. But, yeah. Um, basically, the, 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 the whole, like, trap is that um, you go down and, yeah, there's a bunch of, like, syringes. So, yeah. Anyways, we meet Sarah. Goodbye, Sarah. Sarah is dead. We talk to Sarah, and then Sar Sarah's like, yo, what's up? And then she gets shot by uh, Joseph right here. Oh, God. I need to heal up. Wow! Joseph with the aim lock. He has aim, <laughs> aim assist for some reason. Oh, my God. He has aim assist. Dude has aim assist. All right, we're going to take this Molotov. And, yeah. Joseph is now on top of the stairs, but we're gonna bypass Joseph and go to this door instead because we need to get a key. 
right here. So w with this key, you can actually like unlock the next door. Oh yeah, I forgot about the stuff in this game. This this game, if you have if, if you die in this game, there's like some quotes about like the movies and stuff like that, if I'm not mistaken. But yeah, this is the the final like. Is this the final? It should be like the final TV parts of the 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 game, if I'm not mistaken. I'm not too sure. Uh, where's the fire? Fire is this one. Uh, can't find the shotgun. Where's the shotgun again? Okay, chain is this one. I think shotgun is this one. Yeah. Okay. All right, there we go. Uh, this puzzle is just matching up the uh. How do you say the traps to what it does like the outcome of it so yeah i don't know why they, they I, don't, I don't think they have like enough budget to actually make more more um better traps i guess they just reuse a lot of stuff but the only good thing about this game is that there's hello zep Rather than the first game, because the first game doesn't have Hello Zap. It's the da -da -dun, da -da -dun, da -da 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 -dun. that 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 tune, and it's cool they have it in the Saw Two. All right, there you go. All right, here comes the next rammer, and I'm gonna be really really cautious about this rammer because in my practices I actually died to him like. Three times, and I don't want to do that, honestly. <laughs> Just saying. Okay, cool. Oh wow, I actually got like one of them. All right. Oh yes, he gets dragged in. Wow, that's actually a really good time save right now. Oh god, he's gonna say the p word to me. No. No, stop him and get, <laughs> stop him and get, I, 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 I can't even speak, I, Dices, please. I He's saying know. the bad words to me. Alright, I'm gonna hope to actually pass through him. Please? I don't want to get hit by him, please. Uh, there we go. Okay, cool. Alright, here comes the last part. Hopefully I'm not gonna be near him, because if I'm near him, he could actually grab me and I die instantly. Even with like the amount of health that I have, I would die instantly. Alright, move back. There we go. Heal. And then we're gonna meet Joseph again because Joseph... Oh, okay. I was like wondering what's happening with the door. Um, Joseph right here is back and he has a gun again. Uh, I think Henry actually passed him the gun actually, so... Okay, hopefully I don't get another hit on him. Uh, by him, sorry. Move, 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 move. Good. All right, cool. Another another quick time event right here. Because they give you a lot of quick time events, honestly. Um, Go to this door. And then, right around here, we have to do the, the load of high puzzle again. Um, Blink and you miss it. Oh god. Did I do it wrongly? There we go. So this one is to actually just prevent prevent uh the shotgun collar from actually uh shotgun collar shotgun vest. Oh my god. I need a different shape between the shotgun collar and shotgun vest. My bad. Um yeah, you you're preventing the shotgun vest from actually like activating because when you hear that beep, uh it's about to activate and once it hits like a uh, what you call it, like the the eh kind of sound. Uh, it means that it's gonna explode, or it's gonna yeah, it's gonna explode. So yeah, there's a difference between like the the shotgun collar and shotgun vest. Shotgun collar is actually in Saw One, that's why uh, I say shotgun collar. I totally forgot that this one is a sh shotgun vest and not a shotgun collar. But anyways, this is the final puzzle as well. We're gonna get another one more of these like boxes right here that would activate the uh, the trap. But we're gonna say no you and do this puzzle right here if I can actually do it. What? 
Um, there you go. Ha, oh, phew. All right, cool. All right, here comes. Is this the final rammer? Yeah, this is the final rammer. Oh, as <laughs> what Agdysis would like to say, the second final rammer. That's true. Yeah. So I'm gonna go over here and um, hopefully this rammer right here would actually hit this. Ow! Wow. Okay. This might be really. B yeah, I knew it. Ah. Uh, whatever. I'm just gonna reset. So, the rammer. I'm just gonna say this, the rammer could actually stun lock. And once the rammer stuns lock you, uh you can't really escape. That's why like I just reset the whole checkpoint instead, because yeah, I can't really escape from that area. But yeah, I need to like go into like this corner right here and then hopefully get him to stick onto the wooden crate right that and then move this crate right here. Hopefully, push him. Goodbye. F in the chat. There you go. We got a key from him, and then it unlocks this uh, door. Um, you need to explain about the last part of the, this part of the game, honestly, because I really, really need to concentrate on this part. Oh God. Uh, what if I do this instead? Oh god. Oh, this is gonna be a mess. This is actually just gonna be a mess. Oh yeah, this is gonna be a really bad mess. There you go. Uh, there you go. Okay, you can explain about this part. Oh, this part is terrible. Yep. So, throughout the whole game, there's kind of been these, uh, some areas where the shotgun collar can activate. Uh, this one is... Oh my you... god! Okay. Well, yeah. there's the example. Oh, you kind of saw it. Uh, anytime you enter the red light, the shotgun collar will immediately go off. Uh, yeah. leading to instant death. Uh, this part is absolutely a run killer and is, uh, terrible. And that's why I don't run this game anymore. <laughs> Yeah, like it's an instant uh, death if you hit one of the red lights. And like, I don't know, Zombie Interactive or Konami, Ko Konami could have done something about this, but they don't. They didn't want to do anything about this, so whatever. Let the let the player suffer, I guess. Let the speedrunner suffer. Okay. Let's go right around here. Please don't hit the light. Thank you. All right. It's like it's a freebie. This might be another freebie. Yeah, it's a good freebie. Almost to the end. Almost to the end, chat. <laughs> or viewers. People who are, who are watching this on YouTube as well. <laughs> oh, no! Oh, oh, no, 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 no. Okay, okay. I have to be very safe because... Uh, collision! I hate Collision in this game. I forgot about talk... I, I forgot to t even talk about Collision in this game. Collision in this game really sucks. If you go into, like, a corner, it doesn't really register that well. Oh, my God. I might have to wing it right here. Wing it. There you go. That was a really bad kind of pattern, but whatever. At least I made it out. <laughs> Anyways, we get to meet this guy right here, and we are not gonna hit him at all. We are not. We're just gonna bypass him because he's not really gonna be our concern, honestly. Also, here's Henry, and Henry's gonna get uh, killed by Pigot because he's like, "I'm the chief of police." If you kill me, the whole police department will get you! And then, like, um, Pig is like, yeah, whatever. He just dies. Like, Pig is a punk. Alright, another, um, door trap right here. We're coming to, like, the final parts of the game, actually. 
Because the final parts of the game, you get to meet uh, Joseph for the last time, and then yeah. Uh, we're gonna do this, um, explosive puzzle again, or the, the vials puzzle again. Let me see about this one. Please be blue, because I need blue. Yellow. Oh, by the way, this, this, um, contraption right here is actually very RNG based. So... To be fair though, like, because it's very RNG based, you can actually get like red, red, and blue, blue immediately, or you can get like yellows, like, right now, what I'm getting at the moment. So I need like two blues and then I'll be done. But, um, yeah, it doesn't really work that well with the RNG. It's just that, like, you gotta hope and pray that RNG actually works into your favor, like that. So once RNG actually works into your favor, you can actually complete the puzzle or complete that, uh, the, the, the mini game. There we go. Alright, attach this bomb to here. Uh, close the door. Close! Michael. Alright. Explosion! Three, two, one! There we go. Alright. Now we're gonna meet Joseph for the final time. And this is where Agdysis would like to say that we are the final rammer of this game because it's gonna come really soon. Oh, it just makes sense. Mm-hmm. Gonna heal. Oh god! Heal! Wow, he actually took a shot on me. Which kinda sucks. Anyways, yeah, we're we're coming up to the final parts of the game. Um after this part I have to save Michael. And that's about it. So yeah. Um Here comes this part. Here we go. We are the final ram of the game. We ram. <laughs> we ram into Joseph. But he's not dead yet. We have to kill him. All right. Here we go. Here comes the fight for the gun. Spam my A button right here. Shoot him dead. He's gone. Rest in peace, Joseph. All right, here comes the final nail puzzle. Oh wait, I didn't pick up the nail. Wow, okay. I thought I picked up the nail, hmm, whatever. Here comes the final nail puzzle, or door puzzle in this uh, in this game. And then, the time is gonna come up really, really soon once I um, save Michael. So yeah. I hope you guys enjoyed this run. Um, if you want to check me out, I am Jewhorse, that's J-U-H-0-R-S-E on Twitch. And yeah, I speedrun a lot of games, I speedrun a lot of horror games. I'm glad to be back for like the 7th or 8th time. And time! There you go, it's time. I'm gonna show these, this ending because this ending is pretty much uh, a different ending from the last time when I showed this game. So, last time when I was on the show and uh, I showed a different ending, I showed Campbell's ending. This time, I'm gonna show Michael's this ending, so, yeah, I'm just gonna be quiet for a bit.
All right, so Michael gets two choices: either freedom or help. Um, help John Kramer as his apprentice. So yeah, that's the whole like it's the truth ending, I guess. I wish there was a Saw three. <laughs> I honestly wish there was a Saw three, or some kind of a new Saw game. But we have Dead by Daylight, so. Yeah, but yeah, if you want to check me out, I'm uh, JewHorse, that's J-U-H-Z-O-R-S-E, twitch.tv slash J-U-H-Z-O-R-S-E. I do a lot of horror games. This is not the only horror game that I actually run. I run a lot of games like Silent Hill 1, 2, 3, 4. I run Resident Evil 3 as of recent. Um, I, I do Saw 1 and Saw 2. Uh, there's a, a plethora of games that I actually run, and I'm probably going to be back on the, the show again sooner or later. But yeah, this is Saw 2, and yeah, heck, do you have anything to say? No, that's about it. Thank you for doing the run, Juo. It was a good time. Before we head on off for the night, do you have anything you want to add? Uh, yeah, shoutouts to, like, Airshock. Uh, and, and thanks to you, actually, for actually making me run this game. Hey, there you go. Yeah, you are my inspiration well, for me to run this you. game. And you should run this game again! <laughs> we'll see, we'll see. All right. Anyway, that about wraps up the show for the night. I do want to say thank you, everyone, for watching and tuning in for this episode of Speedruns from the Crypt. We'll be back uh, in about uh, two weeks. I believe that'll be the 16th. I'll be back then uh, for a special episode. I'm taking a while to guess what uh, holiday that might be based around. Hint, hint. And uh, that'll be the theme for next time. Anyway, oh, yeah. One more then... thing. Sorry, sorry. One more thing. Sure. Go for it. Uh, to all the Asian people... Uh, happy Lunar New Year! Gongxi uh, Fatai, Sinian Kwaila, because I'm I'm from oh, yeah. Singapore. Yeah, I'm a Asian, so happy we, Lunar we're New Year. Yeah, we're celebrating Chinese New Year, so happy New Year to uh, to the Asians uh, who are celebrating it. All right. Anyway, with that being said, as well, I've been your host, Dicus. I hope you all have a wonderful day or night, and see you next time. <laughs>